een hele goede morgen. Dames en heren, jongens en meisjes, welkom op de slotdag van de Military Boekelo Enschede 2023. Het gaat een enerverende dag worden. Vanmorgen scheen de zon en we hopen dat die zon ook nog weer tevoorschijn gaat komen in de loop van de dag. De prestaties, dames en heren, die zijn belangrijk. Vandaag het afstuitende springen begint zo dadelijk met Fabio Fani Chiotti uit Italië. Starttijd is exact half twaalf. Dus ietsjes andere volgorde als andere jaren. We hebben de deelnemers in de Nations Cup wat verdeeld over de startlijst. Dus het is niet helemaal omgekeerd aan het resultaat. Alhoewel bij de laatste deelnemers zal Nicolas Toussaint, de man die uit Frankrijk komt en hier in 2006 al heeft gewonnen. En die gaat aan de leiding en die zal in dit springparcours als laatste starten. Julien de nemen straks een positie in. Judy Hancock, kaart Groot-Brittannië, uit Frankrijk, Samuele Sos en uit Nederland, Merel Schuring. Het parcours is ontworpen door Chris van Helder. Chris heeft 12 hindernissen, 15 sprongen. Hindernis nummer 7, de Rabobank, 3 sprong. Stel. Dan één gelopsprong, Oxe, twee gelopsprongen, stijl. En dan hebben we ook uiteraard de dubbelsprong later in het parcours. Oxe, stijl, de ene is nummer 11 en 11A en 11B. De laatste is de is nummer 12. En dat is de is van de provincie Overijssel. Lengte van het parcours, 515 meter. Tempo wat geleden moet worden ligt wat lager dan in cross country. 375 meter per minuut. En toegestaan is een tijd van 83 seconden. Ja, good morning and welcome to show jumping day here at Military Bukalo. We'll be starting in approximately 8 minutes time. We have a busy day for you. 80 combinations still to come forward after tackling Adrian Ditcham's impressive cross-country course yesterday. A great day of cross-country and we're looking for another great day of sport here. In just a few minutes time we see for Italy, Fabio Fanny Coyotti brings forward Tuto George as the first to jump. We have several competitions here. We have a Nations Cup competition which sees France heading affairs country with Nicolas Tuzan also the individual leader so it's two uh, France have team and individual riders up there in the lead we'll go in reverse order of merit but we also have the Dutch national championship with Meryl Bloom Hussman and Visserve de Albion in the lead nou, verschillende klassen met uh, bij te houden. Zoals uh, Nick Gout het al zei, commentator uh, uit Engeland is ook oud deelnemer hier aan de Military Boekelo. En ze uh, jaren geleden werd Nick hier uh, ja, in de top 10 uh, geplaatst. Hij werd uh, negende. En hij gaat uh, mij vandaag helpen hier bij het uh, springen. Uh, Jan Wilbeek, een andere collega, die is gisteren ook in orde bij Cross Country. Die zal straks uh, de prijsuitrekkingen verzorgen. Frankrijk is aan de leiding met een... Uh, Scoren van 86,5 in de dressuur. Na de cross country 97,8. Toch wat wordt volgenomen op het team wat tweede staat voor Brittannië. Frankrijk dus 97,8. En voor Brittannië tweede met 107,2. België doet het ook hier weer goed. Hele seizoen al. België staat de derde. 113 minpunten. En dicht daarachter Nederland op een hele mooie vierde plaats. Nederland aan de dressuur zevende, maar gisteren door de resultaten in de cross country opgeklommen naar plaats uh, nummer vier. Het is trouwens ook een uh, overal klassement over het uh, hele jaar. En daar was de uitslag eigenlijk al bekend, want België heeft het hele jaar door goed gepresteerd. België is uh, überhaupt uh, overal winnaar van 2023. Nicola Toussaint is aan de leiding. De Fransman gaat hier op herhaling. Uh, 2006, ja ja, 17 jaar geleden, won hier de Militri van Boekelo en Schede. Voor België staat uh, Lara de Niederkerke, Meijer er zeer goed voor. Op het tweede plaats met Ducati Darville. Het verschil is uh, zeer miniem, 25,4 voor Toussaint en 26,6 voor uh, Lara de Niederkerke. Dan Laura Collet, ook alweer een winnares uit het verleden met Da Capo op plaats nummer 3, 26,9. 
En hebben we nog een MK. Medailles op uh, dit moment uh, staat uh, Janneke Bolzaaier op uh, brons met Arm Special en 40 punten. Heel dicht daarbij Sanne de Jong op een uh, zilverpositie met Global uh, Fairly Flashy. Verschil is een half puntje, 39,5 voor Sanne de Jong. En Merelblond Hulsbaum met uh, Vesuve d'Aveyron aan de leiding 37,9. Maar er kan nog van alles gebeuren, want de vlag op Adriaan Smulders niet aan. Gisteren geweldige klas gereden. Vorig jaar brons voor Adriaan, 62 jaar. En hij staat nu in het MK op een vierde plaats. Nou, de minuten tikken weg. Ik zie nog een minuutje of vier. En dan gaan we beginnen. Yeah, just a couple of minutes to go. Remember, four penalties for a fence down. And we see riders go in reverse order of merit. So the pressure builds as we get to the end. There is just one fence between the top six combinations and in the team competition it's tight as well. 97.8 penalty points for the French with Great Britain in second place on 107.2, less than 10 penalties. A little over two show jumps between first and second place. In third place is Belgium with 113, with the Dutch, the home side, on 117.4. A lot could change in this show jumping course. A great track that's been built for us here today. They have to travel at a speed of 375 meters per minute, with a length of 515 meters, with 12 obstacles giving 15 efforts. A lot could change in the show jumping this afternoon. Well, a very warm welcome back to Bukelo here in the Netherlands. It is the final day of competition and uh, we are very much looking forward to seeing how all of the action unfolds. We've had three brilliantly uh, exciting days over the last three days, two action-packed days of dressage. And of course, yesterday, the thrills and spills over Adrian Ditcham's cross-country course. So how does everything look coming into the final show jumping phase today? Well, what have we got in store for you? First of all, this is how it is going to work. So we are going to start in reverse order of merit. So things will get more and more exciting as the the day progresses. The only exception to that is that the team riders will also be coming in reverse order of merit in terms of their team standing. So, for example, if we look at the the team standings, you have got the likes of uh, Switzerland, Germany, Australia, Italy, Sweden, Ireland are the, the bottom teams, and they will all put their riders forward first. And then France, who lead the Nations Cup, team competition as things stand at the moment will have their first team rider go and then their second team rider go and so on and so forth. Actually only two teams, Ireland and Great Britain finished all four of their riders on the cross country course yesterday so we'll keep you updated with how that looks as the day progresses but this is how the competition looks individually Nicolas Toussaint, Diablo Mont for France, 17 years after Nicolas first won here in Bucalo can he make it another French victory? 25.4. He is ahead of Belgium's Lara de Lida Kirkemeyer, Ducati Darville, and Laura Collet de Capo, who had those 15 penalties removed for uh, missing a flag that were on the leaderboard when we left you yesterday. They were removed on review from the ground jury. So the team competition, France leads at 97.8, couple of fences in hand of Great Britain in second, who have one fence in hand of Belgium in third. Netherlands just off the podium. But let's get a first look at Chris van Gelder's show jumping track in this uh, all-weather arena that we uh, saw for the first phase for the dressage as well. And Fabio Fanny Chionti and Satogo George will get us underway. One thing that struck me actually when I looked at this course is it looked like there were plenty of places to lose a little bit of time. So it'll be very interesting to see. 83 seconds is the time allowed. Now I'd say Fabio has set out like he means business. He's not hanging around at this early part of the course. Oh, got away with that slightly. And he actually worked really hard through the combination because he just ran in a little bit deep to the first element, had to work to get the distance to the second part of it. But the horse jumped beautifully. So giving us a real masterclass as the first to go. Comes forward 
on a score of 88.5, left him in 80th place overnight. Ah, first part of the combination goes just before the final fence. So four penalties to add there. And the last, unfortunately, goes as well. So eight jumping. And we'll have a look at his time in just a second as well. So four volts for each of the rails down. And actually, he's been given eight time faults on the live scores, but that would actually mean that he was 20 seconds over the time allowed, which doesn't look quite correct. So we'll get that updated and, and double check it for you. Um, but Fabio Fanny Chianti, two poles down to complete his bookalo. Next to come forwards, it is uh, Lexi Kilfeather and Lord of the Morning for Ireland. This 12-year-old by Sandro Hitt, owned by uh, Everina Kilfeather. And they come forward having had a good round in the cross-country yesterday. A late 20 penalties at the belt bank, but otherwise jumping clear over Adrian Ditcham's cross-country track. And interestingly, Lexi just feels to be going a little bit more steadily than Fabio. So it really will be interesting to see how that time plays out. Jumping really nicely through the combination, though. Horses, of course, all had to pass that final horse inspection this morning. Three were withdrawn overnight and one not accepted. We'll confirm details of those for you at the end of Lexi's round. Now, the time penalties are starting to clock up now. So 0.4 of a penalty for every second or part second thereof over the time and one rail has gone. So uh, that is going to be 92.7 to add uh, for Lexi. And actually, the, the time allowed is looking at 83 seconds. That was when her time penalty started to clock up. So Camille Lejeune, good size, des quatre champs. The next to come forward for France. France, who enjoyed a great day at the office here yesterday. They were uh, unbelievable in the Nations Cup competition. Unfortunately, one of their individual riders is one of those not coming forward today. Cedric Liard, Song de Magai, not accepted before the show jumping. The three other withdrawals, Beau Posthumus and Smokey, Robbie Kearns, Pisco Sauer, and Brandon schaefer Grau, Froilen Freida. So Camille Lejeune comes forward now with a good size de Quatrechain for France. This 11-year-old owned by Catherine Defoy. They were one of a good number of horses to pick up 20 penalties in the second of those waters yesterday. And uh, just added 29.2 uh, uh, time faults as well. So they come forward on a score of uh, 81.0. Interestingly, both of our first two combinations have found the second half of the track a little bit more influential than the first. It's always a very different test for horses to come out and jump on the final day of a long format competition, having gone cross country for 10, 10 and a half minutes yesterday. But actually, 
going on the, the cross country yesterday was as good as it could have been asked for. The Ox are at nine and just uh, rolls it out behind. So just the final fence. The time penalties again are going to start clocking up. And uh, Camille Lejeune, good size. De Cotrachin. It is just the one pole down. But actually, some eight seconds over the time, which is going to be 3.2 time penalties to add as well. So uh, he will finish on 88.2. That sees him out in front of those that have been so far. But uh, still a good finish to his competition here in Buffalo. And don't forget that the time penalties exactly the same in the show jumping as they were for cross country. 0.4 of a penalty for every second or part second thereof over the time and uh, interestingly two of our three combinations have picked up significant time penalties but the first to go who really did look like he was moving pretty quickly was three and a bit seconds inside so i would imagine it is going to stay the same that was fabio fanny chiotti now though we turn our attentions to uh, morgan yeriat back at dargon 79.5 their starting score for france in 77th position coming forward and a, such a frustrating day for this combination yesterday because they had a really early problem out on course. 20 penalties at the first of the Tricanas on otherwise what was an absolutely brilliant round. Ah, just ran down that line slightly and took the uh, vertical in front. There's plenty of people around the arena already this morning. They're just going to get busier as the day progresses. But you're jumping straight in towards the crowd. This horse, plenty of scope, plenty of jump. Normally very careful in this phase. I think the time is going to be very, very close as well. Ah. First part of the combination goes. So that is eight jumping to add. And the time is going to be very tight as well. Just going to sneak over 0.8 time penalties plus eight jumping. So 8.8 .8 in total for Morgan Yuriat and uh, Baccarat Dargon, 88.3, their total score. That actually just drops them one place on the leaderboard. They'll uh, go behind Camille Lejeune, good size, De Quattrocham, who finish on 88.2. So... Certainly early indications show that the uh, show jumping track that has been set for us by Chris Van Gelder is not going to be uh, straightforward. The uh, time certainly proving influential. 83 seconds is the time allowed. One person has gone inside that yet to see our first clear round of the day. So next to come forward now. Riding as individuals for Germany on a score of 69.6, Ben La and Sitius. This combination, again, picked up 20 penalties yesterday in the second of those waters. But otherwise, clear in Adrian Ditcham's cross-country track. It was a tough day yesterday in the cross country. Certainly caused plenty of drama. Caused plenty of movement on the leaderboard as well. We'll keep you updated with how that leaderboard is going to unfold. We've obviously got the Team Nations Cup competition, the individual competition. Ah, first part of that oxer just goes. And the Dutch National Championships will conclude here this weekend as well. I would say that the time is also going to be an interesting one here. He's 
going to be not quite quick enough to get home within that 83 seconds. And the first part of that combination, which has gone on a number of occasions, and the second part goes as well. But he clears the final fence and is going to have a 1.2 time penalties to add as well. So Ben Lur and Sitius, 12 jumping, 1.2 time. And that is going to see him complete the day on 82.8. So the combination on that final line proving to be the biggest challenge on this show jumping track so far. Of course, still a very, very long way to go. And those riders that are coming forward later on, I'm sure will be watching these first few to go with interest. Word will have very quickly got back to the collecting ring that the time is tight. Only one inside it so far. Now the turn of Uttara Diva. Patrick Martin Byrne, riding as an individual for Ireland, rides this horse that he owns himself. Uh, they jumped clear across country yesterday, just picked up uh, plenty of time for 31.6. They come forward on 69.5 as a total score. Oh, Crikey Moses, I thought for a moment he might just lose his balance out the side door. But he recovered very well. Ah, final part of the combination does go. And I have a feeling the time is going to probably add up for him as well because he's added a few strides here and there. He gets through that influential combination. The time penalty is just creeping in now. Ah, the last goes as well. So it'll be eight jumping and a good handful of time for Uttara Diva and Patrick Martin Byrne. Sees them with 14.4 to add in total. 12 jumping and 2.4 time, 83.9 is their total score. So, uh, again, still looking for our first clear round. Now we welcome another Irish individual rider. This is Tara Dixon with Mum Karen Dixon's Master Smart, 69.0 for this duo overnight. They put in a quick cross-country round yesterday just had a technical 20 penalties down at the uh, final water they didn't have the easiest of jumps in missed their line for the second element and crossed their tracks but otherwise it was a very good round from this pair Tara based over in Ireland grew up actually uh, in England for a good part of her childhood. Mum Karen, who has uh, ridden on four teams for uh, GB at the Olympics. Had those wonderful horses, Get Smart and Too Smart. And it's great to see the Smart name continued here as well. And she's doing a really good job and actually would be one of the quicker ones that we've seen in the show jumping here. 83 seconds the time allowed, remember. You need to be coming round about where she is for this final line. So actually we could be on track to see our first clear round. Tara Dixon and Master Smart. The time is okay. And the last days as well. What an absolutely brilliant performance from this young lady, Tara Smart, 
Uh, Tara Dixon and Master Smart looks absolutely thrilled with that. And so she should. Absolutely uh, brilliant from her in all three phases. And I name, I'm sure we'll see a lot more of in the future. But great to see her come out and deliver a really, really strong final show jumping around. I think I just caught her 21st birthday as well. So pretty cool way to celebrate. Not many of us can say on our 21st birthdays that we were jumping a clear round in Buccalo. Now we turn our attentions to Rebecca Joanna Gherkin and TSF Solara riding as individuals for Germany. This duo come forward on 65.7 as a starting score. Again, another combination that picked up 20 penalties at that uh, water yesterday. 32.4 in the dressage plus uh, 12.4 time penalties. Very clever down that line into the combination. Clear still so far. Again, the time looks good. Slight rub on the first part of the combination, but it stayed. Just the last to go. And we have another clear round as well. So uh, we waited a while, then we get two at once. Rebecca Joanna Gherkin, TSF to Solara, complete on 65.7. And that will see them guaranteed a top 70 finish. I think we could well see them move up the leaderboard as well. So uh, now we turn our attentions to the first of the British individual riders. It will be uh, Max Warburton on a score of 62.7 with that uh, Deer Park Revelry by uh, Hermes Dalev, this nine year old owned by the Pask Syndicate and had a really unfortunate late 20 penalties on course yesterday at the bottom of the belt bank, having had a super spin cross country. They would have been pretty good on the clock as well up to that point because they only ended up with 9.6 time penalties. So 62.7, the score they bring forward, cannot afford a pole down to hold their position. And this horse, while I'm sure Max frustrated with that 20 penalties yesterday, would have been absolutely thrilled with the feeling he got because not overly experienced. First run at the four-star long level. And actually comes here off the back of a 11th place finished at Blenheim in the eight and nine year old class there. But one pull down and point four of a time penalty at Blenheim. So far, so good in terms of their show jumping round. He is going to be a little bit down on the clock, though. Likely just going to sneak a time penalty or two. Ah, and the first part of that combination goes. So uh, just the one pole down and 0.8 time penalty. So 67.5, the score for Max Warburton and uh, Deer Park Revelry. And that sees him just drop one place at the moment. 
behind uh, Rebecca, Joanna, Gherk and TSF Solara, who are on 65.7. Don't forget, we are jumping in reverse order of merit, but all of the individual combinations coming in reverse order of merit, first of all. And then after the break, we continue in the uh, individuals coming in reverse order of merit, taking us up to about the top 20. And then we bring in the reverse order of the team riders still to jump as well. And actually only two teams finished with uh, four riders yesterday. That was Ireland and Great Britain. So they will uh, be the first team riders that we see. Now it is uh, Sarah Beckstrom and Dicta Oldrup combination who are very established at this level now come forward having jumped clear cross country yesterday 26.4 time penalties to add their 36.1 dressage One of 14 different nations represented here this weekend. I miss the horse that has really made Sarah's dreams come true. Taken her to junior, young rider, European championships, all the way up to the four-star long level. Again, the time is going to be very tight. But clear jumping as they come to the final fence. And it is a clear jumping. Just 0.8 time penalties for Sarah Beckstrom and Dick to Oldrup. So they will hold their position. 62.5 will take them to 63.3. And a double clear albeit with a few time penalties for uh, Dicta Oldrup and Sarah Beckstrom here in Bukalo 2023. So now we welcome forward combination for the United States of America. Riding as individuals, it is Hallie Kuhn and Cute Girl. This is a horse she owns alongside uh, Helen Kuhn. Nine-year-olds uh, by Coventry. Now, they were second after dressage, 25.0, personal best at international level for the horse, but uh, went out actually with the potential to be the overnight leaders on the cross country and unfortunately picked up just an inexperienced 20 penalties out at fence 14. So that took them out of contention. But while I'm sure Hallie will be ruining those 20 penalties. The feeling that this mare gave her yesterday will leave her very, very excited for 2024 because they looked absolutely brilliant, including at the final water where there was a slightly sticky moment jumping in. But the mare pricked her ears, looked for the flags, and they made it happen. And that is what cross-country riding is all about. So no doubt that their day will come. And interestingly, Hallie there, you could see she'd added a stride going down to that red upright. And she just really opened up on that accelerator down the bottom end of the arena because the time is so tight, you can't afford to be hanging around. And there's a few parts of the course where, actually, if you don't just keep moving, you can waste a bit of time because there's some sort of more lengthy cantering stretches Certainly this little mare, she absolutely can jump. Usually very careful in this phase. And the time is going to be pretty tight. Hallie Coon, cute girl, just the last to go. And she absolutely flies the last, oh, 0.4 of a time penalty. Hallie Coon and cute girl clear round, but just 0.4 to add. So that will see her on 60.2. She'll be frustrated with that time penalty. But again, I think uh, she'll be thrilled with the way the mare jumped. And uh, definitely a combination to keep an eye on going into 2024. So if you're just tuning in here to Bookalo, 
a very, very warm welcome to you wherever you are joining us from in the world. I know we've had people tuned in at all times of day and night over the last few days. So uh, it's great to have you with us. Benjamin Massey for Louder Pearl, the next to come forward, the first of two rides for Ben. And actually, he comes forward on a score of 36.1 in 26th place coming forward. He is jumping out of order because he also has his other ride a little bit later on, who's sitting in 25th place, Esprit de Boussac. So jumping out of order with the first of his rides, 36.1. A clear round would certainly see him really looking to make a move up the leaderboard because it is uh, very, very tight when it starts to get into the top 30. One pole covers the top 10. Or top six, I should say. Two poles cover the top 10. Sticky moment going into that combination, but recovered really well. Now, it's showing us one pole on his penalties. It's showing us clear on the live leaderboard. Just had a moment going down to that bottom rail. Time is going to be pretty tight as well. Ben Massey, just the last to go with Falauda Pearl. Clears the final fence and is going to sneak just over the time. So 0.4 of a time penalty. Now, just for look for confirmation of that. Because showing is clear on the live scores. So, uh, Ben Massey for Louder Pearl, I think, has picked up one pole down, which would just drop him a few places on the leaderboard. Drop him some 10 places or so. Next to come forward, Alfie Marshall, just have faith, TN. Alfie coming forward in his first four star long format. And he currently sits in uh, 65th place. 59.5 is his score coming forwards. Jumped a brilliant clear round yesterday. This horse only a nine-year-old owned by, owned by Alfie himself, who's competing as an individual for Great Britain. Just have those two clear rounds inside the time for Re Tara Dixon and Rebecca Joanna Gherkin. Otherwise, the time has proven to be pretty tricky. And I think we'll be so again for Alfie. But clear as he comes to the final fence. And he gets the last as well. Oh, just sneaks over the time. A really, really good clear round from this young man, though. And I'm sure he will go away from Bukalo very excited about this young horse's future. Because very much proven at the four-star level. 63.9 is his total score. As Ben Massey's score has been updated now to include that pole down at five. Now... It is the turn of Anna Seema. Anna comes forward with uh, FRH Bucks Avondale. It's a horse that she's represented at Germany on at uh, a couple of European championships. Completed Kentucky Five Star as well. Comes forward on 56.8. 
very frustrating 20 penalties in the final water yesterday because they were well on track to make the time. Came home even with those 20 penalties with just 2.8 time on 56.8. Cannot afford a pole down to hold her position. Oxa, front part of it just going there. At six. Time again is going to be very, very close. You need to be coming round into the final accommodation, round the back of that red vertical with around 68 on the clock. And it does just sneak inside. FRH butts Avondale, just the one pole down for Germany. So that will see her finish on 60.8. And in terms of the leaderboard... That sees her just drop the one place on the leaderboard at the moment. Again, we still have a few of those team riders to come forward. The team riders coming in team reverse order of merit uh, a little bit later on. We've uh, got an action-packed day here, of course. And then the top 10 individual riders, regardless of nation, will be coming forward in reverse order of merit. The only exception to that will be Lara de Lidekirka Myers, uh, Huni Darville, who will jump out of order because Lara also another horse in the top 10. Megan Healy and Think It Over as individuals for Ireland now in the show jumping. 56.6 their score. Jump clear cross country yesterday. Just uh, 22 time faults to add. This combination who've jumped clear in some five of their last seven international rounds in the show jumping. I've picked up the odd time penalty, which is something to be aware of here because, as we've said, 83 seconds that time allowed. And you can see Megan really just moving on around the top of the arena. Course designer Chris van Gelder from the Netherlands has given plenty of places to lose time in this show jumping track. You've just got to keep moving. And that includes down this final line. If you keep moving down the final line, you uh, certainly can make up a little bit of time. But just sneaking outside, a brilliant clear over the fences. 0.4 of a time penalty, all to add for Megan Healy. But a double jumping clear round here. This weekend, and that will see her finish on a score of 57.0, which holds her position on the leaderboard. So, will be 63rd at worst. So, now the first of our combinations from the Netherlands. And don't forget the Dutch National Championships taking place as part of this competition here this weekend. Marta van Ryl and uh, Epo who were one of the last to go cross-country yesterday, put in a really, really good clear round and uh, just uh, had a handful of time penalties to add 21.6 to go to their dressage of 34.7. So they bring forward 56.3. Again, could not afford a pull down to stay ahead of Megan Healy and think it over. And Bukalo, such an inspirational event for, yes, any event rider, it's very much one that goes on riders' bucket lists. But for those riders representing the Netherlands, 
their home flagship event is always unbelievably special. And this combination looking for their first completion at the four star long level. Confidently through the combination. Oh! And didn't really see that coming, to be honest. Just came round, looked to have had a reasonable distance at it, but maybe just didn't like the distance and the horse just ducked out the right-hand side. Marta did very well to uh, hold on. So that will be four penalties for the refusal and obviously will have taken her a little bit of time as well to represent. So the time will come into play here. Ah, I think perhaps just aware of that and then just you can see her shaking her head in frustration just perhaps rushes a little bit down the final line which is really frustrating for this combination they should still be very very pleased with their first completion at the level and uh, i'm sure we'll see them back here again in the future 71.9 is their total score so that does uh, see them drop a few places on the leaderboard So, uh, Martha Van Ryl and Epo just dropping down about 10, 12 places on the leaderboard. Next to come forward for Ireland as individuals, it is uh, Declan Cullen. Declan rides uh, Ultimate Quality, nine-year-old by OBOS Quality, owned by uh, Becky Cullen and Martina O'Hara. Very good cross country yesterday, just 15.6 time penalties. Clear round over the fences. Declan, who's uh, had some good days here in the past. Good to see him back here in Bukalo again. Based over in his uh, home country of Ireland. And there's a really, really strong Irish contingent. I'm sure the ferry was pretty busy as they all uh, came over. the early part of the week. This accommodation that went to Blair Castle International at the end of August. Ah, first part of the accommodation goes. Came forward on 51.7, so just that four faults down thus far. Didn't quite get the distance he would have wanted to that Oxer at nine. And actually, the time looks okay as he comes down the final line. But the first part of the combination goes. So three fences down as he clears. The last time is good. Declan Cullen, ultimate quality. 12 jumping to add for him. And that actually gives him a score uh, 63.7. So Declan Cullen, 63.7 is his total score. And that will see him drop probably six or so places on the leaderboard. So Marcio Cavalho georges and uh, Royal Encounter next to come forwards. Marcio, who... Uh, Rides this uh, eight-year-old by Lancelot for uh, himself and for Annabelle Veer Nickel. Very good clear round in the cross country yesterday. 17.2 time penalties. And I would imagine that the plan here with this eight-year-old this weekend has very much been give the horse a really good experience, get a qualification run at the four-star long level under their belt as well. Marcio will be heading out to uh, Chile for the Pan American Games. In a few weeks' time, Castle Howard Casanova, the horse that he'll be riding as part of the Brazilian team seeking 
to secure the Olympic team qualification. And on that score of 49.8 coming forwards, has a little bit of breathing room to hold his position of those that have jumped. But of course, we've still got a good number of horses actually in the team competition to jump a little bit later on as well. So a clear round would really put the pressure on and he could capitalise on that. The time is just going to prove a little bit tight, but clear jumping as he comes to the final line. Ah, first part of that combination goes. Oh, sees a, a long shot to the last, but uh, just the one pole down and actually a couple of time penalties to add as well for Marcio Covalho George and Royal Encounter. 5.2 in total. They finished the day on 55.0, but a tick in the Olympic qualification box for that horse because uh, very much on the radar of a lot of riders this year looking to get that qualifying run done and dusted. I'll go through that with you in a little while. But now we turn our attentions to Stefan Hazelega and uh, James Bond for the Netherlands riding as individuals. They come forward on 49.4. Clear cross country with 14.8 time penalties yesterday. This is a horse at 11 years of age, owned by Stefan himself. I guess you all know who this is, but it's James Bond with Stephen Hazeltager for the Dutch team. 36 jaar kopt uit haar stad. Vorig jaar ze debuut gemaakt. This combination have jumped on a couple of uh, the Nations Cup teams for the Netherlands this year. And the Netherlands in the team competition here in fourth, actually, just off the podium as things stand. They'll really fancy their chances to climb as the day progresses. Doing a good job so far. Clear as he comes to this triple bar. Ah, back rail of the triple bar goes. And unfortunately, the vertical as well. Time looking okay. Ah, the final fence goes as well. So, uh, really frustrating finish to Stefan's uh, show jumping round. This horse wouldn't always find this phase the easiest. But uh, still, they complete here. 65.4 is their total score and actually comfortably inside the time as well. So, uh, next uh, two come forwards. It will be for Great Britain, riding as an individual, Izzy Taylor, with Jane Timmis's uh, SBH Big Wall. This is a horse only an eight-year-old, and actually was very impressive in the cross-country yesterday. I think Izzy would have been thrilled with him. Came home with 4.4 time penalties, and actually 11 jumping penalties for breaking advice at the first of the open corners at 17. So... Uh, a lot to look forward to with this horse who finished fourth in Le Leon Danger as a young horse in the World Championships last year. He's made the step up to uh, four star this year, but has only done a couple of four stars. It's very much been a big weekend for him. Uh, Oxer at three has gone in front.
did a good job through the combination. The horse was very, very careful there. And the time looks pretty good as they come to this final line. Ah, second part of it goes. Barely breathed on that from what it looks like. But two poles down for Izzy Taylor. And uh, SBH Big Wall gives her a total of 53.8. She'll be very pleased with this horse for the future, though, because only an eight-year-old and has really stepped up to the competition this weekend. So... Uh, We'll look forward to seeing them in 2024. Now, it is a combination who were really impressive in the cross country yesterday. Irish individuals, Sammy Davis Jr. and Jennifer Coonley, 14 years of age by Imperial Heights, owned by Cottle Daniels and Margaret Kinsella, comes forward on 45.2. Combinations. Another lovely Irish first uh, run at the level together. I tell a lie. Second run at the level together. They actually uh, were top 15 in Cronenberg in the four-star long format earlier on this year. And this horse giving Jennifer some really, really good experience at the upper levels. She's a very talented jockey, has come through the junior young rider teams for Ireland. And actually finished fourth at Hartbury in the Young Rider European Championships last year on this horse. And this one of 10 horses in the field, actually, that have won at this level previously, took the four-star long format in Campfire back in 2018 with Carl Daniels on board. More than capable of jumping a clear round this two, these two. In their last eight, they've jumped five clear rounds. Time is good. And a really, really smart uh, jumping round from Jennifer Coonley, Sammy Davis Jr. She finishes on 45.2. And uh, certainly a combination that we could well see maybe make the step up to five star next year. They uh, are the third clear round inside the time so far today. Two of those have actually gone the way of Ireland. Tara Dixon being the other Irish individual to have gone clear. And then, of course, uh, Rebecca Joanna Gherkin as well. So, next to come forwards, it is Tyler Cassells with MC Parco Pete on a score of 44.3. This all stepping up to four star level for the first time. Actually, Ty's first visit to. Uh, Bookalo, top 20 at Little Downham and clear cross country at Hartbury and Burgham as part of their preparation for Bookalo this year on a score of 44.3 and uh, cannot afford a pole down to stay ahead of Jennifer Coonley and Sammy Davis Jr. That triple bar and that line there comes uh, away from the in gate, so directly away from you go in and out of the arena, but actually has ridden pretty well. I think the fact that it's a triple bar means you can be a little bit more positive at it. So, could be about to see another clear round. Ty Cassells, MC Parco Pete, 
jump the last and inside the time as well so he completes on 44.3 a double clear round on the horse's debut at the level and uh, Tyler Cassells completes his first bookalo as well. So we'll be uh, guaranteed a top 50 finish to put it into context. He's in 47th place at worst, of course, running in reverse order of merit. And all of the individual riders coming in reverse order of merit first, bar those featuring inside the top 20. So we'll see those a little bit later on. Uh, for now, though, we turn our attentions to uh, Belgium and Chris Vayaka, Guantanamo van Olsingen, 43.7. Their score coming forwards. Belgium, who are getting so much strength and depth as well up the levels, have uh, booked their first Olympic team ticket since London 2012. And the runaway winners in this Nations Cup series in 2023 as well. So just that early pole at two has gone so far for Chris. Time is going to be very tight. He might just sneak inside. So Guantanamo Van Olsingen does just pick up 0.4 of a time penalty. And one pole down. So 48.1 is his total score. And uh, that will see him drop a few places on the leaderboard, potentially out of the top 50, but still a good number to jump of team horses left to go. And it means that Tyler Cassells and Jennifer Coonley with those two clear rounds uh, moving up a little bit further on the leaderboard as well. Next to come forward, Mathieu Chambard and a big boss Milo. This a combination that have been really impressive, actually, over the last few days. 12-year-old by my Lord Carthago, owned by uh, Gail Labber and Nicholas Mara. 30.5 in the dressage. They did a really sweet test. And then uh, just 12.8 jumping at time vaults yesterday, beg your pardon. 43.3, the score they bring forward. Again, could not afford a pole down to hold their position on the leaderboard. Any penalties in this leaderboard become very, very expensive. This horse actually was top 10 in Cronenberg a little bit earlier on this year in the four star long format there. Won the three-star long format in Linear at the end of last season. So doing a really good job as he comes to the last. The clock is good. And it is going to be clear round number five. Goes the way of Mathieu Chambard. And Big Boss Milo. This is a really, really exciting horse for the future. And uh, two uh, excellent double clear rounds at the four-star long level this year. Who knows what 2024 will have in store for them. Now it is the turn of the first of three rides for Lara de Lidekar-Kamaya. She comes forward with formidable 62. Riding as an individual for Belgium. And uh, she comes forward on a score of 43.3. Uh, is equal 
on penalties with Mathieu Chambard, but actually Lara just a little bit closer to the optimum time yesterday, so holds the higher place by virtue of that in 46th place at the moment. And this horse, only a nine-year-old by four edition, owned by Irene Takel, but wouldn't have a huge amount of mileage and experience. That has gone. The aim with this horse this weekend was very much good experience and a qualification box ticked for Paris. Just uh, on the two poles down at the moment. And unfortunately, that Oxer at nine does go as well. It's always different for horses coming out and jumping on the final day. The clock is good. So just the last to go for Lara de Lida Kirkamaya. And she clears the final fence. So three poles down, 55.3 the total score for Lara de Lida Kirkamaya. And uh, formidable 62. We'll see her drop a good few places on the leaderboard. Goes uh, into around 57th place on the leaderboard. Would be said as well, Lara still two to go to jump a little bit later on. Both of uh, her other two horses sitting inside the top 10 individually. So, uh, definitely look out for her later. Ducati Darville, Lara de Lide Kirkemeyer's final ride sits in second. So, will be the penultimate combination to jump. Followed by, of course, our overnight leader, Nicolas Toulon Diablo Mont for France. Now, we uh, turn our attentions to Luc Chateau, Ego de Cabans. 42.5. Six, their starting score. That left them in 44th place overnight. 43rd place overnight, I should say. Owned by Laurie Sadro, by Colombe de Us. Stallion at uh, Karim Leguag won an Olympic gold medal on in uh, Par uh, not Paris, Rio 2016. French team won team gold. Paris, of course, very much on everybody's mind, including mine, apparently, going into uh, next year. Quite tight the time, but could get away with it if he just keeps moving down this final line. And he sees a good stride to the last, so he will be okay. Very, very good, clear jumping performance for Luc Chateau. He finishes on 42.6, and that is clear round number six on the board. So, Luc Chateau has completed, and uh, a very good double jumping clear round for him. Next uh, to come forward, the last to go before the break, it is Avuta de Clean as an individual for Belgium with Quintera. Comes forward on 42.4. Just 10 time faults yesterday for this 11-year-old uh, owned by Bart Gamine. This combination completed here 12 months ago. Had three down on the final day on that occasion. But have uh, since been top 15 in Cronenberg earlier on this year. Ah, 
middle part of the combination goes. The last part did stay. Gives the uh, horse first ox a, a bit of a rub, but again it stays. He's going to pick up a few time penalties though, I would imagine. Ah, back rail of the ox up. And the time penalty start to clock up as well. Clears the last and is home safely. So Ruta de Clean Quintera finish on 52.8, which means after the first session of jumping, the clubhouse leader Benjamin Massey for Lauda Pearl 40.5, uh, Luke Chateau in second 42.6, and Mathieu Chambard, Big Boss Milo in third 43.3 but still a good way to go because we have uh, got plenty more to bring you and we'll be turning our attention to uh, continuing the uh, reverse order show jumping after a short break uh, laura collett will be first into the arena with sportsfield freelance and then we will be welcoming the first of the team riders forward in reverse order of merit in terms of the team standings as well. So the individual placings start to become a little bit more jumbled until we get to the top 10 when they are run in reverse order of merit. Just one poll covers the top six, two polls covers the top 10. It promises to be a really exciting conclusion here in Bukalo. And we do hope that you'll stay with us. We'll be back after a short break. So in around 15 minutes time, Laura Collett and Sportsfield Freelance will be next to jump. Do stay with us and we'll see you then. Benjamin Massey and Philo de Pearl is the current leader on a score of 
Welcome back to uh, Bookalo as we uh, look forward to starting the second session of show jumping after that short break. The course designer here, Chris Van Gelder, and the op time allowed is 83 seconds. Has proven to be uh, pretty challenging throughout the first session, but it is doable. We've had six clear rounds inside of the time allowed. As uh, Next uh, to come forwards, it will be Laura Collett with the first of her two rides. Also sits in third overnight with De Capo, but she brings forward uh, Sports Field Freelance, first of all. Well, news just coming in, actually. Laura Burley, Bob Cotton Bandit have withdrawn as well, so they will not be coming forward to the final show jumping phase. Uh, so, Sports Field Freelance... And Laura Collett, new ride for Laura. She's taken over the reins or taken up the reins uh, short term to deputise for the injured Aoife Clark. Horses first to four-star long format yesterday. And actually went brilliantly just with a few planned time penalties after a long route. Laura who trains in this phase with Jay Hallin, the international show jumper. On that, oh, on that score of 41.4, but now with four to add, so 45.4. Put in quite tight that vertical, but horse picked up for her. The time looks okay. Influential combination. The first part has gone a good number of times throughout the day so far. So uh, two poles down for Laura Collett and Sportsfield Freelance. And actually, I think the last fence may have gone as well. Just caught it out of the side of my eye as she cleared it. So it would be 12 jumping if that's the case. And that's confirmed there, 53.4. We just see it being put up in the background. So 53.4, Sportsfield Freelance, Laura Collett complete. As uh, next to come forwards for the Netherlands, riding as individuals, Adrian Smulders and a cow. 41.2, their starting score. And that is uh, courtesy of a dressage score of 39.2. And then just two time penalties cross country, so five seconds over the time yesterday. And again, this could be a really competitive score in the Dutch National Championships as well which is taking place alongside the competition. Unfortunately, that Oxa has gone at two, I believe. The Dutch National Championships, the highest placed Dutch rider in the competition this weekend, currently led by uh, Meryl Blomholzman for Soiv de Viron. And again, another pole has gone. Unfortunately, two parts of the combination go as well. So four down at the moment. And proving to be a pretty expensive show jumping round, unfortunately. The time is okay, but five fences down. So 20 jumping penalties to add for Adrian Smulders and a cow. And they complete on 61.2. They are the ones to beat still in the Dutch National Championship, but there's still three combinations left to go. And that's obviously just taken the pressure off somewhat. Got Meryl Blumholzman, Sanna Jong, Janneke Boonschgaard left to see there. 
So now we turn our attentions to France and the individual combination of Sebastian Cavaillon, Elipso de la Vigne. So Sebastian comes forward on a score of 37.4. Nine-year-old by Arco. So uh, great show jumping lines in this horse's uh, bloodline. And they were very good yesterday. 6.8 time penalties to add to a competitive dressage score. Currently sitting... in 20, 31st place coming forward to the show jumping. We've had six clear rounds inside the time so far. Looking really comfortable, these two. Time is absolutely fine. Just the final fence to go. And gets a lovely shot at it. You can see how thrilled he is with that. A really, really good double clear for this combination this weekend. Ellipso de la Vigne is definitely a name to keep an eye on for the future. Sebastian Cavile. Looks very, very pleased as well. 37.4, he completes on that score, and he is now the one to beat. So he's guaranteed a top 30 finish. And a very, very good clear round for him. So clear round number seven inside the time. Goes the way of Sebastian Cavaillon and Ellipso de Levine. Now we turn our attentions to Alexander Hewell. Elfield Voyager, who actually come forward on a score of 36.2. They were clear and inside the time yesterday. I think the first that we've seen actually come forward to the jumping, having been inside the time over the cross country. It's uh, a horse that has been up to the five star level. This mare, 14 years of age, owned by Dr. Sheila Rowe, was bred by Sheila as well, by uh, Graffenstolz, same sire, of course, as uh, Lordship's Graffalo, Ross Cantor's European champion and badminton winner. It's a nice day here in Buccalow, and actually it's a much calmer day than we have seen. Just a gentle breeze as opposed to the uh, fairly breezy conditions we've seen over the last few days. The flag's more fluttering in the wind. And, uh, of course, still lots to look forward to. We'll be welcoming the first of those team riders in the not-too-distant future. Twelve nations represented in the Nations Cup this weekend coming into the show jumping. It is France with two fences in hand of Great Britain. Great Britain in second with one fence in hand of Belgium. And then the Netherlands in fourth, just one fence behind Belgium. So it is going to be unbelievably tight in the final show jumping phase. And of course, we've got the individual classification to decide as well. So here is Alexander Huell, Elfield Voyager, on that score of 36.2. And actually, I think Alex would have been really pleased with this mare in the first phase as well on uh, dressage day because almost the horse's best test at the level. He completed Blenheim last year as well. Come here as an end of season target, having things not quite gone their way at badminton this spring. One would imagine after yesterday's cross country round, Alex will very much be uh, looking 
for a trip back to uh, Gloucestershire next spring. So one pole has gone. The first fence, always the most frustrating, I think, to have down because it feels a very, very long way round. Just jumped him off slightly there. And I thought for a second he was going to head to the point of no return. But Alex recovered well and actually jumped that vertical without his stirrup, which he's just got back. But just lost a couple of seconds, perhaps. He is the time definitely going to add a little to his score also. So uh, 0.8 time penalties and one pole down gives him a score of 41.0. It'll be a top 40 finish for Alexander Huell and Elfield Voyager. The leader of those that have completed, and the target is 37.4. Sebastian Cavile and Ellipso de la Vigne are the score out in front at the moment. And now we welcome a second ride for Benjamin Massey. Esprit de Boussac, the horse that he brings forward. In 25th place overnight, this is a nine-year-old by Dom Pierre, owned by Ben alongside Anne-Philippe. Three seconds over the time yesterday for 1.2 time penalties brings them forward on a score of 36.0. The second time we've seen him today, this is Benjamin Massey for France with Esprit de Boussac. Had one pole down and a single time fault on his first ride, who uh, were actually next to each other in the placings overnight, 25th and 26th respectively. Always an advantage to have come in and jumped it once. Get a feel for the distances, get a feel for the time. But of course, two very different horses as well. Cannot afford a pole down to hold his place on the leaderboard and stay above Sebastian Cavile, Ellipso de la Vigne. Quite an atmosphere here around this main arena. It's only going to grow and grow as the day progresses and the tension builds, but plenty of people here already. There were some 60,000 plus spectators yesterday on Cross Country Day. So, coming down the final line, just the last to go. He's on a clear round at the moment. The time is going to be quite tight. Just sneaks outside, 0.4 of a time penalty, but a clear jumping round for Benjamin Massey, Esprit de Boussac. The individuals from France finish on 36.4. And actually, he now becomes the one to beat. Uh, will be 26th or better. Just actually that one time penalty or 0.4 of a time penalty drops him one place potentially behind Karen Donker's Leapheimer van Tverifov, who still have to jump. As next to come forward, riding as individuals for Great Britain, Rose Nesbitt, E.G. Michael Angelo. Come forward on 35.7 in 23rd place coming forward to the show jumping. Rosa knows this horse so, so well. They've come up through the levels together all the way up to five star. Completed Bramham in the top 20 a little bit earlier on this year. Jumped clear around 
I had one poll down, beg your pardon, on the final day there. Ah, middle part of the combination has gone. So that's four penalties to add at the moment. To put it into context, with still admittedly a few to jump of those team riders jumping out of order, one pole costs about 10 places on the leaderboard first part of that combination has gone down so many times today and unfortunately goes again there's going to be a couple of time penalties to add as well so 44.9 still a sub 45 finishing score for rose nesbitt eg michelangelo and they will finish inside the top 45 as well but as we say it is uh, unbelievably tough one pole does equate to around 10 places on the leaderboard as things stand at the moment. Next to go, it is a young lady who had an absolutely brilliant day in the cross country yesterday. It is Cosby Green and Yosofo de Kadam riding as an individual for the United States of America. Comes forward on 35.6. And this combination actually did have a flag penalty awarded but that has since been removed cosby who's based over with tim and janelle price for the summer has been learning a huge amount from two of the best riders in the world and i know janelle in particular has been giving her a lot of help and support Both Tim and Janelle still to jump a little bit later on. So one pole down. First part of the combination went at seven. It'll be very close on time. It actually still keeps moving down this final line. So just outside, 0.4 of a time penalty as well. Cosby Green, your Sufo de Kadam. I think she'll be pretty pleased with this weekend's efforts though jumped that brilliant clear round inside the time yesterday and so that will see her go into around 30 second place at worst so next to come forward for also for the United States of America a combination that was so impressive on the cross country yesterday Tiana Kudre and D'Artagnan riding as uh, individuals for the US, nine-year-old by Diamond de Semily, owned by Tiana alongside Annabelle James. Just a handful of seconds, seven seconds to be exact, over the time yesterday. And Tiana brings this horse forward in uh, his first four-star long format. Tiana Kudry actually came here back in 2010 with the great Ring Ringwood Magister, secured her best finishing score at Buckelo of 38.4, so she could better that here this weekend. Top 25 at Blenheim in the eight nine year old class a few weeks ago.
There'll be plenty of US riders. I have a feeling the final part of that combination went. I did hear a little noise. We'll check the live scores. It just disappeared from shot. But yes, it did go. So four penalties to add. Be a number of the young American horses here. You know, nine-year-old now. Give it five years when we have their home Olympic Games in LA 2028. And they'll be 14 years of age. And that's very much been on the mindset of the American riders for some time because a home Olympics is a bit of a once of a lifetime opportunity. First part of the combination goes as well. So uh, going to have a couple of time faults as well. 0.8 time penalties, 44.1 for Tiana Kudre and D'Artagnan. And uh, that will see her drop a little bit down the leaderboard, finish just outside the... Uh, well, she'll be inside the top 40, in fact. So 44.1 uh, her total score. Now we have uh, just two, three more combinations to go before the uh, team rotation of riders starts. Georgie Campbell and Global Quest, the first of those to come forwards. Georgie, who uh, comes forward with a score of 35.1, four seconds over the time yesterday, sits in 20th place coming forward to the show jumping. So a clear round will guarantee her a top 20 finish. I think Georgie's celebrating her birthday this weekend as well. Based down in Kent with husband uh, Jesse Campbell, who's also a uh, five-star event rider, represented New Zealand at the Tokyo Olympics. This horse that won the four-star long format in Linier at the end of last season. First part of the combination did go for Georgie as well. And actually looks like... I just saw that added on there. And just took that in front, got in a little bit close to it. So eight to add for Georgie at the moment. Unfortunately, first part of the combination as well. Time is good. And the last days. So 47.1 for Georgie Campbell and uh, Global Quest. Time is absolutely fine. So just the 12 to add. Sees her finish on 47.1. And she will go into 45th place on the leaderboard. So that drops them, unfortunately, out of the top 20. It is unbelievably close in this leaderboard. And it moves Benjamin Massey, Esprit de Boussac, up to uh, 22nd at worst. He is the clubhouse leader, the one to beat at the moment, ahead of... Uh, Fellow French rider Sebastien Cavallon, Ellipso de Levine on 37.4. Now it is uh, Storm Straker. Storm comes forward with uh, Fever Pitch, riding as individuals for Great Britain. First Bookalo for Storm. And a first four star long format for the horse as well. Top 20 at Blenheim in the eight nine-year-olds class. Top 10 at Blair in the four-star short there as well. Having stepped up to four-star level at the end of last season. 32.6, the score that they bring forwards. All of those dressage penalties because uh, they were clear inside the time. Four seconds inside the time over Adrian Ditcham's cross-country track yesterday. Yet to see anybody finish on their dressard score so far here in Bookalo this weekend. There were 19 clears inside the time yesterday. Which worked out at about 17%.
just the last to go. Storm Straker. And Fever Pitch. The time will be very tight, but she... Oh, the last goes. Just catches it behind and 0.4 of a time penalty as well. I just wonder if she might have been aware of that clock, perhaps. Who knows? Still a very, very good performance from this young lady. And uh, she will finish in the top 25. So, Esprit de Boussac, Benjamin Massey move up once again. They are the ones to beat at the moment. But Storm guaranteed a top 25 finish here. Just frustrated with that final fence going at the very last moment. Now, Arne Bergendahl for Germany with Cechovic. Arne comes forward on a score of 32.4. And in 14th place... Coming forward to the show jumping, we've just got two individual riders left to go before we welcome the first of the team riders forwards. So Arne Bergendahl and Chekovic on that score of 32.4. Clear round cross country yesterday inside the time, 16 years of age, owned by Arne alongside Helmut Bergendahl. Oxer at three has gone, just caught it in front. Huge amounts of people around the outside of the arena now. There'll be a lot of noise, a lot of buzz. This line comes directly away from the in gate, but it's actually jumped pretty well throughout the day. Time looks good for Arn. Coming to the final line with just the one pole down. And he clears the last as well. So he looks uh, pretty pleased with that. Just four penalties to add for Arne Bergendahl and Chekovic. It'll still keep him inside the top 20. He'll drop a few places at the moment, but 36.4, the total score. He actually uh, finishes on the same score as Ben Massey, Esprit de Boussac, but holds the higher position given that he was uh, closer to the optimum time. Now we turn our attentions to the first of two rides for Roz Cantor. Roz comes forward with Dasset Cooley Dunn. This is 17 year old, owned by Kate Willis and Mel Pritchard. 32.3 was one of the horse's best ever international scores in the first phase in the dressage and then delivered a clear round inside the time cross country. Mouse, as he's known at home, was produced up to uh, five star by uh, British uh, event rider Sarah Way. He's very, very diminutive in stature. He would stand probably not even 15 to less than that, definitely. And he's very pony like in his way of going. But he has a way of going that really suits him. And they let him go that way as well. That score of 32.3. She's in 13th place coming into the show jumping. If she can jump clear, she would really like her chances of a top 10 finish here. Time is absolutely fine. Very pony-like in that combination. And uh, comes home with a clear round inside the time. 17 years of age, but better than ever. Roz absolutely thrilled. And uh, I'm sure 
Mouse's uh, legion of supporters will be as well because so many people adore this horse, I have to say myself included. He is unbelievably cool and uh, absolutely loves his job. 32.3, guaranteed top 13, likely to move up to the top 10. Watch this space, Ros Cantor, Dasik Cooley done. Now, we turn our attentions to the first of the team riders. So how this is going to work is the teams are coming in reverse order of merit. So the fourth team rider will come first, then the third, then the second, then the first. Uh, but actually the top 10 individual riders are pretty much in reverse order of merit in the individual standings as well. However, the exception to that is only Ireland and Great Britain have four team riders to show jump. So actually Sam Watson will be the first of the team riders that we see with his own and wife Sparkles Watson's Ballyneety Rocketman. He comes forward on a score of 70.2. 20 penalties cross country yesterday at that final water that caught so many people out. I have to say a massive shout out to whoever has been in charge of the music here in Bukalo this week because... There's some great Rocketman music going on in the background as well. We had James Bond for James Bond in the dressage. They've been having a lot of fun with it. And I have to say, it adds an extra level of entertainment that eventing can certainly enjoy. Time is going to be very close, but jumping clear so far. Just the last to go. Sam Watson, Ballyneasy Rocket Man, just wow. 0.4 of a time penalty, wow. but left wow. all of the poles standing. And uh, he uh, completes on a score of 70.6. He'll be frustrated with a couple of the phases this weekend, frustrated with the 20 penalties yesterday, but definitely one to watch for the future and a horse that would absolutely relish a good, tough day at the cross-country office, I am sure. So, Sam Watson, the first of the Irish riders. He was the drop score for the Irish team, so that doesn't affect their team score, has completed. Now, the drop score for the British team is, at the moment, Yasmin Ingham Rihi DJ. But they are on a score of 53.0, which is only 1.3 behind their counting score. So a clear round would absolutely benefit the British team here because they haven't got a lot of breathing room ahead of Belgium hot on their heels in third. So Yas Binningham with the Sue Davis fans, uh, Rihi DJ, Piglet as he's known at home. Picked up 20 penalties at the bottom of the belt bank yesterday. He has the world champion, first ever British winner of Chio Arkin this summer as well. Both of those with Banzai de Loire. But this horse has been top five here previously. And you can see Yaz really not been hanging around on some of those turns really just opens up on that accelerator oh, she rubbed that vertical but I think it stayed the time is very good. So just the final fence to go. Yasmin Ingham, Rihi DJ. Clear the last and uh, comfortably inside the time. So a clear round on the board for the British team. She is the drop score at the moment, but they can call upon her should they need it. Yas Ingham, Rihi DJ, finishing on 53.0. she's... So, next uh, to come forwards 
It will be yep. Kevin McNabb for Australia, Miss Pepperpot coming forward on 67.5. So this is where we really see the reverse order of nations for the teams. Because actually both Germany and Switzerland, who are in 11th and 12th, have only two riders left to show jump. So they won't bring their riders forward just yet. Uh, Australia. This is a counting score for them, 67.5. They were really well placed in the top five after dressage. Kevin McNabb, Miss Pepperpot, but picked up 20 penalties at that influential final water out on the cross country. On a score of 67.5. So that sees him in about 70th position at the moment. So far, looking very confident in the show jumping. The time looks absolutely fine. 83 seconds is the time allowed. Do you want to be turning past that red vertical into this up double, as the first part of the double does go, with around 14 seconds on the clock, if you can. So just the one pole down for uh, Kevin McNabb and Miss Pepperpot, and that will see them... Uh, just drop below Sam Watson, below Tara Dixon, below Max Warburton as well. So they finish on 71.5 and it is four to add for the Australian team. And it takes the Australian team score on to 147.1. I think we'll confirm that in a second. Next to come forward, Paolo Torlonia, ESI Bethany Bay. Paolo comes forward as the first of the Italian riders and counting score for Italy as well. So, so Paolo Torlonia, ESI Bethany Bay on a score of 60.3, currently sitting in 60th position. Just a few time faults yesterday. Jumped clear cross country, so bidding for a double clear here. Oh, rubbed the vertical there, but I think it stayed. Sometimes you just got to get away with a little bit of luck. Paolo based at Tom McEwen's at Gatcom Yard over in England. Has been there for a couple of years now. And the final part of the combination does go. And that ox that really rolled in its cups. So three rails down so far for Paolo Torlonia and ESI Bethany Bay. They have completed 72.3. So uh, that does drop them a few places on the leaderboard. It will drop Italy uh, below Australia as well. Australia's team score confirmed after Kevin McNabb of 151.1. And then you have uh, Italy on 155.9. Italy, who uh, currently sit in second in the Nations Cup standings actually came into this uh, event very much expecting to have to fight for an Olympic qualification ticket but in reality the only team who could have caught them in terms of that Nations Cup ticket on offer to the highest placed team in the series at the end of the season that has not yet qualified 
was Spain, and Spain unable to field a team here. So that means that Italy's uh, position is safe and uh, they will have that qualifying ticket done and dusted. Now, Amanda Anderson and Jersey come forward for Sweden. Sweden on a team score of 140.9. Again, this is one of the counting scores. All of the scores we're going to see now in the team are counting scores for the team competition. Combination stepping up to the four-star long level for the very first time in their career. 67.2, the score they bring forwards. Ah, add four to it now, though, unfortunately. Sweden, one of those teams that actually picked up their Olympic qualification in Protoni at the World Championships last year, which really took the pressure off them this season. The time is probably going to be a little influential here as well. But Amanda Anderson comes down to the final fence with two down so far. Clears the last and is going to just sneak 0.4 of a time penalty, so 75.6. But she completes her first long format full start. And I'm sure that will have given her even more of a bug to come back and improve and enjoy in the future as well. So Amanda Anderson... 75.6 completes her round. So, getting really into uh, some important rounds in terms of the Nations Cup standings. Uh, next to come forward will be Ian Cassells for Ireland with Shanbo Superflex. They come forward as a counting score for Team Ireland. And on a score of 54.2. This is a nine year old by Flexibil, owned by Francis Corkery. Clear cross country yesterday, just a few time penalties to add. And uh, just to uh, confirm, Ireland in seventh on 130.9. They've got a bit of a buffer back to Sweden on 149.3, but they are very, very close to the top four or five, to be honest. So a clear round really does put the pressure on. We're going to see a lot of movement amongst these top six teams because every single pole is going to play its part. Ooh, got away with a lucky rub at the third. Ian, who uh, is unbelievably competitive on the Eventing Ireland circuit. Is keeping up a really good quick rhythm here. Very aware of that 83 second time allowed. So, three fences left to go. The time is absolutely fine. Ian Cassells, Shambo Superflex. Just the final fence. And he clears it beautifully. So, gives us clear round number eight. And uh, Ian Cassell, Shambo Superflex, put the pressure on New Zealand and the US because Ireland, 130.9 is their score. New Zealand, 128.5. Janelle Price is next to come in and jump. Uh, just ahead of them, the United States, 122.6. The Netherlands, 117.4. So actually, you can see how unbelievably tight it is in the team standings. And Ireland, very much in a position to be able to pull themselves up a good couple of places. The podium isn't even out of the realms of possibility if they all jump clear. So watch this space. Things are starting to get very, very exciting here in Buccalo. Now Janelle Price and Senor Crocodillo, owned by Joe and Alex Giannamore. Janelle, of course, uh, needs very little introduction. Part of that New Zealand team who took a team bronze in Protoni last year. 
She's a multiple five-star winner. And Senor Crocodillo, another to be caught out by the belt bank yesterday for a late 20 penalties. She's on a score of 56.0. Now, if she has a pole, Ireland move ahead of New Zealand. In the Nations Cup standings. Janelle and husband Tim would often spend a good part of February out in Spain on the Spanish Sunshine Tour. They really enjoy doing a good bit of the pure show jumping discipline at that early part of the season. Senor Crocodillo stepping up to four star level for the first time here. But actually one in Kililki in the four star short there is usually a very good jumper. Six from six in his last six internationals have been clear. And is about to make it seven from seven. Janelle Price, cool as a cucumber. Senor Crocodillo, 56.0. That is the score for Janelle Price, and it means New Zealand hold their position ahead of Ireland. So, Ireland on 130.9, New Zealand 128.5. New Zealand in sixth at the moment. They've still got two of their riders left to jump. Now, it is the turn of the first U the U.S. team riders, Philip Dutton. Philip comes forward with Denham. Now, the U.S. team were actually in 11th after dressage, but a good cross-country day yesterday pulled them up to 5th. They're on 122.6. They have a fence in hand of New Zealand. They are just over a fence behind the Netherlands. So, Philip Dutton, who, again, needs very little introduction. His experience and accolades within the sport, absolutely extraordinary. But this, a really exciting eight-year-old that he rode uh, yesterday very much for a good confidence-building round for the horse while also getting a good score on the board for the team, 47.2. Denham, a horse that was actually produced over in Europe by Merrill Blomholzman, who rode the horse at Le Leon d'Angers as a six-year-old. Philip then went back last year when the horse was seven and... Uh, had one of the best ever US finishing scores at Le Leon d'Angers. Finished in seventh place individually. Jumped a beautiful clear round on the final day in Le Leon. Pretty well travelled horse for just eight years of age. Got some air miles already. On that score of 47.2 in terms of the individual standings, that sees them just outside the top 45. But it's as much about the team at this point. Time is going to be very tight. Philip Dutton and Denham. Comes to the final fence for the United States of America. And it goes. So one pole down and 0.4 of a time penalty as well. 51.6 the total for Philip Dutton. And Denham, it's still such an exciting horse for the future. It does mean that the United States have given the Netherlands a little bit more breathing room. They now have two fences in hand of the U.S., and it means that New Zealand are breathing down the necks of the USA because that is the 4-5-6 position at the moment. But now it is the turn of the first of those Dutch riders. For the Netherlands, Janneke Boonschkaya and I'm Special N. And interestingly, not only is this a key performance for the Dutch team in terms of the Nations Cup, but also in the Dutch national championships as well. Janneke Boonschkaya currently sitting in third, but a pole covers the top three. So a clear round here will really put the pressure on her teammates. On 
on a score of 40, which sees her in 32nd position. Janneke, who won the four-star long format in Babarithko a little bit earlier on this year, was part of that Dutch team who made history in Stragom when they won the Nations Cup in Stragom the first time that the Dutch eventing team had won a Nations Cup leg. She's going to have to watch out for the time there because just added a stride before the first of those verticals. It doesn't look to be travelling quite as quickly as some that we've seen. 83 seconds the time allowed. Of course, you've got to leave the fences up as well. But certainly the time has proven to be influential as the day has gone on. She's going to be very tight on time. Janneke Boonskaya, I'm special N. Coming to the final fence for the Dutch team. Clear jumping so far. And she gets the last. So just 0.8 time penalties. 40.8 for Janneke Boonskaya. And I'm special N. That is going to do good things for the Dutch team score, especially after those clear rounds from New Zealand and from Ireland. And uh, in terms of the Dutch national championship title, she now is the one to beat. She is within a fence of both Meryl Blomholzman and Sana de Jong, who still have to jump. Watch this space. Janneke Boonskaya gets the job done for the Netherlands. She now just needs to watch on. Uh, the Netherlands on 118.2. Still have two fences in hand of the US in fifth. They are one fence behind Belgium. So the first of the Belgium riders come now. Tina Magnus, Dizzy van het Lichtevelde Z on a score of 46.4. 46.4 was uh, 51st position overnight. She had moved up a few places with a clear round here. The Belgian team have only been off the podium once in this Nations Cup series. If they finish on the podium here this weekend, they extend their runaway victory. They've got 600 points at the moment. They can only improve that points tally if they're on the podium. But they've won the Nations Cup this year either way because nobody can beat them. One pole has gone. Oh, and another. So the Netherlands move above Belgium. The Netherlands go into third place. Belgium still in fourth. Time is absolutely fine. Really can't afford another pole down. Just the last to go, which she gets... Tina Magnus, Dizzy Van Het Lichtevelde Z, one pole down for uh, Bel uh, two poles down, beg your pardon, for Belgium. Sees Belgium now on 121.0. The Netherlands move into bronze medal position, 118.2. So we're now going to see the first of the British riders, but just to put it into context, France, 97.8. Great Britain, 107.2. Netherlands 118.2, Belgium 121.0. They're the top four. So Caroline Harris and D-Day next to come forwards. They come forward on a score of 51.7. It's a nine-year-old by Billy Mexico, owned by uh, Lucy Matthews, Fiona Olivier, Marie and Richardson and Heather Royal. We're inside the time yesterday but picked up 20 penalties at the belt bank. The skinny brush on the bottom of that bank, same as teammate Yazingham. Now, interestingly, because Yazingham has jumped clear on a score of 
if Caroline Harris and D-Day have a poll, then Britain will still hold their position at the moment because they will just count Yaza's score and they will just add 1.3 penalties. So that's good enough still to keep them in the silver medal position, which takes the pressure off Caroline slightly, but she won't be feeling that. She'll want to deliver a clear round for the team. Day very clever and careful, had a real conscience at the first part of that combination. Ooh, and again, just got in very close to the bottom of that oxa. But the horse is so careful and clever. And D-Day, Caroline Harris, and another clear round for Team GB. So 51.7 is the score, and that will be a counting score for the British team. So Great Britain stay on 107.2. France out in front have two poles in hand. They've still got all three of their counting scores to jump. And if you're just tuning in, then a very, very warm welcome to you. We are running in reverse order of merit, but we've just started the team competition and the team's coming forward now in reverse order of merit. So basically how it works is we get the fourth or the highest score from that team member coming first, then the third, then the second, and then it'll be the best one last. In terms of the individual standings, the top 10 do pretty much run in individual reverse order of merit as well. But if you're wondering why there's a couple of placings jumping about, it's because it's in team reverse order of merit. But it means that the team competition is so exciting and we'll keep you up to date with all of the action there as well because it is going down to the wire. jean Lou Bigot, former European champion for France, Utrillo du Halage, the horse that he brings forward, on a score of 38.5, he has a counting score for the French team. France, remember, two fences in hand of Great Britain. France have only fielded teams in four Nations Cup legs this year. They've won three of them. They were on the podium in the other. Thirty-eight point five, remember. I see Jean Louis Bigot just outside the top twenty five individually. He is clear at the moment. Time looking pretty comfortable, very comfortable, in fact. So, the first of the French team riders comes to the final fence. Clear so far. And he clears the last as well. Confidently done. Jean Lou Bigot, Yutrillo du Hillage, will finish inside the top 30 individually, but importantly, they've delivered a clear round for the French team. So, after the first counting score for every team has been, it is France who still lead the way. They have two fences in hand of Great Britain, who sit in second, 107.2. Netherlands have moved up to third, 118.2. Belgium have dropped down to fourth, 121. Then you've got the United States of America, 127.0. They've just dropped uh, that place there. New Zealand in sixth, 128.5. And Ireland in seventh, 130.9. So you can see how close it is. Switzerland, now the first of their two remaining riders to come forward. Now, Jaminda, top jobs, Jalisco on a score of 36.7. Top jobs, Jalisco was inside the top 30 coming forward to the show jumping. Nadja, who was part of that uh, Swiss team in Protoni for the World Championships last year, 
helps them secure an Olympic qualifying ticket. A very different feeling to this time four years ago when the pressure in this very arena as Switzerland jumped to secure an historic Olympic team qualification was quite something. so far top jobs to list go has really stepped up at the four star level for Nadja this year will be a really good addition to her Olympic chances for 2024 and delivers a yeah. clear round so Nadja Minda top jobs to list go clear round for Switzerland she finishes on her dressage score of 36.7 and becomes, I think, just the second person we've had to actually finish on their dressage score. The other being Roz Cantor, Dasit Cooley Dunn, who jumped as individuals a little bit earlier on. 32.3 there scored. That is currently the one to beat. So now it is the turn of Germany's uh, Nikolai Aldinger and Timo. 32.5 their score coming forward. So uh, very much in contention for a top 15 finish here. Can't overtake Roz Cantor and Dasit Cooley Dunn, but could go into second on the live leaderboard. Just three seconds over the time yesterday on a day that didn't quite go to plan for the German team. They were in the lead in the Nations Cup after dressage, but both Annalena Schaaf and Julia Krajewski, Julia, of course, our dressage leader as well, passing company in the second water which meant that the team only down to two members for this final day. And if a team member does not complete, a team has to count a thousand penalties for that team member. So it is the best three scores to count. So if you've lost two team members, you're going to have to count a thousand, which unfortunately takes you right out of the reckoning. Player so far, and the time is very good. Nikolai Aldinger and Timo. Ah, first part of the combination has gone so many times today. It goes again. But the last stays. So 36.5 is the score for uh, top jobs. That is the score, beg your pardon, for Nikolai Aldinger and Timo. That drops him just outside of the top 20. And it moves uh, Ben Massey. Esprit de Boussac on Bergendahl Chekovic up into the top 20 position. So if you're just tuning in, a very warm welcome to you. We have just one more to go before the final break. And then we uh, come back for the final 25 or so riders. And it is now the turn of Ryan Wood and Cooley Fly, who went out on course yesterday and actually gave us a real masterclass of cross-country riding were the Pathfinders on course. 42.6 is uh, his total score coming forwards. Just 3.6 time penalties yesterday. Went out and got the job done for the Australian team. His accounting score for Australia, but Australia a little bit further on down the leaderboard in ninth in the team standings. Ryan, who has been based over in the United States of America for a good number of years now. His home, his family, his life very much in the US, but still rides for his native Australia. And it was lovely to see yesterday at the end of his cross country, surrounded by not only his Australian teammates, but his great US friends as well. The likes of Jenny Brannigan, Philip Dutton, both jumping in to help. 
the eventing community such a special one. This accommodation have been top 10 at four star long level previously at Bromont earlier on this year but certainly this is uh, a very very competitive field and he will be thrilled with uh, this horse's performance throughout the weekend he finished on 42.6 and at uh, 37th place at worst still plenty to go that could see him move up the leaderboard as well. So Australia's Ryan Wood and Cooley Flight complete 42.6. And that actually takes us to a break now before we welcome the final 25 or so competitors to come forward. How is the competition shaping up? Well, just to give you a quick rundown in terms of the individual standings we're yet to see those at the very top of the leaderboard show jump they will be coming forward in reverse order of merit a little bit later on nicolas duzon diablo month the overnight leader coming into the show jumping phase sits ahead of lara de lida kirk and myers ducati darville in second laura collett de capo in third but one pole covers the top six in terms of the dutch national championships which is also taking place uh, that is currently led by Janneke Boonschkaer, I'm Special N, on 40.8. Still her two uh, Nations Cup teammates to come, 37.9 and 39.5. So they could both go ahead of her. Meryl Blomholtzman, Sanna de Jong uh, could go ahead of her to take that title. And there's going to be a mixed feelings of emotion because, of course, the Nations Cup competition is also going on. So their scores count for the Nations Cup as well, which has actually seen the Netherlands move up into third from the rider that they've had go so far. 118.2 Great Britain, 107.2 in second. France, 97.8 in first but it is unbelievably close particularly third through to say sixth which is just covered by say three rails which across two riders doesn't go very far so that is how things are shaping up at the moment go away have a cup of tea have some lunch whatever time of day it is with you do come back and join us it is in about 40 minutes time so at half past two local time that's half past one uk time not going to try any other time zones. I'll let you figure it out in case I get it wrong. So in 40 minutes time, we'll be back for the final conclusion of this hugely exciting four star here in Bukalo. We'll see you then. Bonzeren zoals uh, collega Bert eruit als hij al aangaf. We gaan nu een ogenblik bonzeren. En het team van Achterwerk zal even in de ring komen om even de bodem uh, een beetje te prepareren. Dat is een fantastisch bij deze sport. Natuurlijk nog even uh, een beetje bij het voetje. Dat is altijd goed. En dan begint het in plaats. En als dat heeft plaatsgevonden, dan krijgen we een prachtige show. Net als we vorig jaar van Veluwe hebben gekregen. Als van wijze zelfs zal ons dan uh, van deskundig commentaar.
We gaan natuurlijk even afwachten tot uh, de firma achter de bodem heeft geprepareerd. En dan krijgen we zo dadelijk een hele mooie show van de Veluwend.
Bedankt alvast helemaal achterwerk. Hij is bijna bij klaar. Top. Dankjewel. En dan, zie je, dan wil ik graag aan u voorstellen de leden van de Veluwe Hunt. We zijn inmiddels in de ring. En net als voorgaande jaren zal de heer Ad van Bijsterveld ons voorzien van kundig commentaar. En een toelichting op al hetgeen en alle gooi's wat ze hier zullen laten zien in de ring. Ad, aan jou het woord. Dankjewel, dankjewel. Wat een prachtige dag op een prachtig evenement. Wij zijn er al een paar dagen. Wij hebben de leaders voor ons... Moet ik even mijn hond houden. Dank u wel, heren van de Rally Prius Mall. Uh, onze fanfare blazers met hun jachthoorn. En mag ik u alsnog welkom heten, onze master en zijn hunstaf met de meuten van de Veluwe, dames en heren. U heeft het al eerder gezien, mag ik een applausje van u. We hebben dus uh, een meute Foxhounds bij. Uh, die heet niet voor niets Foxhounds. Die wordt al honderd jaren in Engeland benamen. Gefokt om te jagen op vos. Dat doen wij natuurlijk niet. In Nederland jagen wij op een uitgezet slipboord. Dus uh, dat is een zakje met de geur van een vos. Uh, alleen onze honden weten natuurlijk niet. Die denken dat ze op een echte vos zitten. En uh, we laten u wat gehoorzaamheidsoefeningen zien. Uh, we moeten met deze honden namelijk ook door de Kalverstraat kunnen lopen. Dus ze moeten links van het paard, rechts van het paard. Uh, ze moeten gewoon opereren als uh, ja, één grote meute. Samenwerkend. En uh, ze moeten luisteren. Uh, we hebben een bitchback. Dat wil zeggen dat het uitsluitend... Uh, u ziet er overigens ook eentje die er niet thuis hoort uh, tussen lopen. Dat is Redcoat. Onze Labrador, maar die oefent altijd met ons mee. Jaakt natuurlijk niet mee, maar het is de hond van onze master, de Krijn Kalkman. En die uh, doet ook zijn best. Uh, Rally Prius Mol, wij zijn Engelse uh, slipjacht. Maar de Rally Prius Mol, dat ziet u misschien ook aan de andere kleding, is Franse slipjacht. Of Franse jacht, want daar jagen ze echt, zeg maar. Uh, dat doen wij niet, wij jagen dus inderdaad op een, uh, op een tussenboord. Uh, de paarden die u ziet... We gaan een oefening doen. De honden moeten even blijven staan. Onze master gaat ze roepen. Blazers. Mogen even blazen. Prachtig, mag ik een applausje voor de Rally Piers Mol. En dat is de pekhoorn. Met de pekhoorn geeft uh, uh, Kirijn signalen aan de honden. Dit signaal is allemaal hier naartoe. En zo uh, heeft hij 10, 20 verschillende signalen om de honden van een spoor af te halen of ze juist aan te moedigen. Um, we hebben een bitchback, dat wil zeggen dat we alleen tapejes hebben. 
Uh, onze ervaring is dat die beter werken dan uh, de herenhonden. En uh, u ziet er allerlei verschillende paarden, maar de meeste jachtpaarden zijn ieren. Ik heb hier in het parcours ook al wat uh, ieren rond zien lopen. Maar de jacht is natuurlijk de voorloper van de, van de eventing. En de Ierse paarden zijn uitermate geschikt om uh, een lange jacht, want we jachten bij ons toch gemiddeld zo'n 20 tot 30 kilometer, uh, uh, uit te houden. Ze moeten niet bang zijn. Ze moeten in de meute kunnen galopperen. Je ziet daar uh, Frederik Blauwers met uh, een hier. Kom aan. Wil jij zo meteen ook even het woord nemen, Trudijn? Of uh, ging niet? Oké. Okay. Dan doe ik het. Geef u het woord aan onze master with the horse, Trudijn Kalkman. Dankjewel, uh, George Maas, Atte Bijnsveld. Uh, wat mooi, wat fantastisch hier weer. Gasten mogen zijn op dit prachtige evenement hier in Boekelo. Mijn complimenten sowieso voor de weergode. Maar goed, en de rest natuurlijk. Uh, ik heb een vierspek bij me inderdaad. Uh, 15,5 voor koppel. En waarom alleen maar teven? Omdat ik van mening ben dat een teef, net zoals in de werkelijkheid, eigenlijk veel harder werkt dan een man. Um, Teef is gepassioneerder, La, slaat de lussen niet over, dus is heel standvast. Ze zeggen ook wel eens dichter bij de, met de neus dichter bij de bodem, dus korter. Um, en daarbij, als ze loop zijn, in season zijn, dan um, zou je normaal gesproken moeten zeggen, nou dan laat je ze thuis voor uh, 21 dagen. Maar in dit geval hoeft het niet, omdat je natuurlijk geen last hebt van de reuën. Um, onze honden halen wij uit Engeland. En waarom doen we dat? Wij fokken niet. Fokken blijft fokken, in mijn filosofie. En de Engelsen zijn daar veel beter in dan, uh, dan wij als Nederlanders. Daar ben ik van mening van. Um, dus we halen de honden uit uh, Engeland um, van de BWH, van de Heathrop Hunt, um, de Beaufort Hunt. We zijn net weer geweest daar. En het is gewoon prachtig dat een andere vereniging, de honden die voor hun niet 100% geschikt zijn, dat ze dan weer voor ons de kans krijgen. En zij hebben ook onze honden weer, die voor mij niet geschikt waren, weer overgedragen aan een Franse vereniging. En die vervolgens weer wat honden heeft doorgegeven aan Portugal. En zo houden we toch onze sport, onze hobby, een beetje in het leven, in gang. En uh, nou goed, probeer toch wel de ideale, de ideale pack te realiseren. Um, toilet. Ik geef het weer terug aan, uh, aan Ad, dan gaan we nog eventjes wat meer met de meut uh, doen. Uh, in ieder geval fijn dat u de moeite heeft genomen om hier te gaan kijken. Dank u wel. Dankjewel, Trudijn. We gaan inderdaad nog wat oefeningen uh, laten zien met, uh, met de meuten. Zoals ik al zei, jagen doen ze uit zichzelf. Alleen, uh, wij leren ze ook gehoorzamen. Wij moeten inderdaad uh, met deze meuten gewoon door de Talstraat kunnen lopen. U hoort op commando, stay. Het zijn Engelse honden, hè. ze spreken bij Engels tegen. Nou, dan ziet u meteen waar die wip voor dient. Stay. Dat zijn twee nieuwe Engelse honden. Die zijn een week bij ons in het pek. En je ziet, in Engeland is het niet per se nodig uh, dat ze onder controle blijven. Ze hebben veel meer ruimte dan wij in Nederland. De meute is volledig geconcentreerd op onze huntsman. Hij is de leader of the pack voor de meute. Um, ik was gebleven bij uh, de paarden, maar had ik al iets van verteld. Maar misschien is het goed dat we nog een keer naar de prachtige klanken van Paris van de Rennie Triasmol kunnen luisteren.
Dank je wel voor deze prachtige fanfare. Um, Quirijn, um, we hebben nog even tijd. Uh, misschien is het verstandig dat we met name de kinderen vragen of ze met onze honden willen komen knuffelen. Um, als jij dan zo meteen deze kant op komt, met de meuten. Normaal gesproken trekken wij uh, uh, door de ring een slipspoor, maar dat ruikt naar vos. En dat is niet heel lekker, dus we hebben besloten om dat dit jaar niet te doen. Uh, ook omdat we wat minder tijd hebben. Um, dat betekent wel dat ik nu alle kinderen uitnodig om in de ring te komen. Kom even naar onze honden en onze paarden. Ja, kom maar jongens. Zijn er misschien mensen die vragen hebben over uh, de slipjacht? Kom maar. Zet hem maar over. Iemand een vraag? Oké. Okay. Kom stay off. Ja, jongens en meisjes, uh, bij de paarden wel graag niet erachter. Een jachtpaard is uh, toch nogal wat gewend meestal, maar om er nou achter te gaan lopen als klein kind, dat zou ik niet doen. Ja. Vind je het leuk? Goed zo. Nee, dat is geen wc -bevoer. Lijkt er een beetje op.
Ze willen dat allemaal een naam. En uh, er zitten een paar ruwe harige bij. Dat zijn Welsh foxhounds. En uh, de gladharige zijn de English foxhounds. Uh, die jagen ook wat verschillend. En de Welsh zit een beetje meer met zijn neus op de grond. Terwijl een Engelse wat hoger uh, zit. Uh, wij rijden per jaar, uh, en met name alleen het winterseizoen natuurlijk, rijden we iedere week uh, een jacht. En zo'n jachtdag die uh, bestaat uit een ontvangst natuurlijk. Daarna wordt het slipspoor getrokken. En uh, dat gaat gemiddeld over zo'n, uh, in het begin van het seizoen, 20, 25 kilometer. Op het eind van het seizoen wordt zo'n jacht 35 kilometer. Dus die honden en die paarden moeten wel wat kunnen, want we komen natuurlijk ook van alles tegen. Hè? Uh, Zo'n slipspoor blijft namelijk niet liggen. Dat, door de wind gaat dat ergens anders naartoe. En dat betekent dat paarden dingen tegenkomen, uh, beken, uh, natuurlijke hindernissen. En ze moeten er allemaal overheen, want we moeten de honden volgen. Oké, okay, uh, we hebben een tijdje gekregen. Uh, want het springen moet natuurlijk opnieuw gaan beginnen. Ik bedank u allen heel erg dat wij hier... Uh, mochten zijn op dit prachtige spektakel en uh, en natuurlijk dan ze hier we hebben enorm genoten van deze presentatie van de leden van de Veluwe en natuurlijk het kundige commentaar van Ad van Dijsterveld. En we geven ze een heel fijn applaus mee. Dank aan de Veluwe. Ja, geef maar gas. Ja, en het lijkt erop dat er een nieuwe hond is geadopteerd door de leden van de Veluwend. Hij geeft al het voorbeeld, gaat al vroegtijdig uh, naar de wagen. <laughs> Prachtig. Nieuw talent. Laat zich kennen hier tijdens de 52e editie van de Melodrie Boekro en Schrijf. Dames en heren, mag ik nog één keer een hartelijk applausje voor de peuter van de Veluwe. Dank u wel. En dames en heren, we zijn uh, hier bezig met de 52e editie van de Military Boekelo en Schree. We hebben de afgelopen dagen al fantastische sport gezien. Donderdag en vrijdag, dressuur op een hoog niveau. Gisteren een prachtige cross met uh, mooie omstandigheden ook dat nog eens. Maar ook een heel mooi aangeklede cross en uh, een geweldig publiek. Dus een fantastische dag. En we hebben zojuist ook prachtige springsport gezien. We hebben de eerste combinaties gehad en de laatste 25 die komen zo dadelijk in de ring. Ja, en dan is het toch een mooi moment voor de voorzitter om nog eens even terug te kijken. 52 jaar lang uh, Military Boekelo Enschree, om daar bepaalde facetten uit te halen. Bij me staat uh, de voorzitter van de Military Boekelo Enschree, Robert Sandstra. Robert, mag ik jou even de microfoon geven? Ja, dat mag je zeker. En dan hoop ik dat ik niet te lang hier alleen sta. Want uh, dames en heren, het is natuurlijk niet gebruikelijk dat je midden in een ring gaat staan om het woord te nemen. Maar uh, ja, soms moet dat omdat je uh, een aantal mensen die uh, bij onze organisatie aangesloten zijn, dan wel vrijwillig 
dan wel uh, op een andere manier. Maar die, uh, die al jarenlang als een uh, soort monument aanwezig zijn, ja, dan mag je deze plek uitkiezen om uh, ja, hier in het hart van het evenement te gaan staan. En uh, wij hebben uh, vandaag twee monumenten die wij uh, er toch wel een beetje extra aandacht willen schenken. En uh, de een die loopt al meer dan 40 jaar hier rond op de military, is in alle vroegte samen met zijn team bezig om alles weer netjes te krijgen voor, de, voor, de, voor het hele evenement en voor de dag die komen gaat. Ik kan hem s'nachts bellen, ik kan hem overdag bellen, ik ma maakt niets uit, hij staat altijd klaar. En dat is Theo, Theo Willemsen. U ziet het aan de tribune, hij is al jaren hier aanwezig, samen met een hoop andere sponsoren. Maar uh, 40 jaar lang uh, uh, zonder één moment te klagen uh, was hij hier. En um, ik heb nog een monument nodig. En die is nu uh, al aarzelend bezig om de ring te betreden. En naast Theo is het namelijk zo dat iemand met de kennis over de sport en de allermooiste foto's die ooit gemaakt zijn van onze wedstrijd, Jacob Melissen, een van de beste sportfotografen van Nederland, ik denk zeker van Europa, maar zeker ook uh, al jaren, al honderd jaar perschef van Military Boekelo. Nou Jacob, jij stopte mee. Wij vonden het een hele eer om jou niet gisteren in de persconferentie, waarin ik je nog een pain in the ass noemde, om jou daar uh, het podium te geven, want het podium hoort hier midden in het hart van de Military te staan. En dat is de ring. En hetzelfde geldt voor Theo. Uh, jullie zijn een symbool voor, uh, voor onze organisatie, voor onze drive, voor onze ambitie, maar ook uh, voor de kameraadschap. En uh, er zijn een paar mensen die wij ooit veroordeeld hebben als bestuur. En uh, die groep is niet zo groot. Maar jullie uh, horen daar vanaf nu bij, want ik, uh, ik heb hier een uh, veroordeling voor jullie. En dat is een uitspraak van Stichting CCI Boekelo. En bij deze veroordeelt het bestuur van Stichting CCI Boekelo Theo Willemsen en Jacob Medesen tot levenslang genodigde van Military Boekelo Enschede. Op die lijst komen jullie te staan, dan ga je nooit meer aan. Beide mannen, ontzettend bedankt. En uh, ja, een klein beetje in het zonnetje, ik weet dat jullie het niet leuk vinden, maar bij deze. Nog één keer een hartelijk applaus voor deze mannen, deze monumenten. Prachtige, warme woorden van uh, ons voorzitter Robert Sandstra. En ook verdiend van de mensen die uh, de woorden uh, toegesproken kregen. We geven ze nog één keer uh, een fijn applaus, mijn dames en heren. En we gaan uh, zo dadelijk uh, terug naar de sport. Om half drie verwachten we de eerste combinatie in de ring. Nog 25 te gaan. Voordat we de definitieve ontknoping hebben van zowel de grote prijs, de individuele resultaten dus, als ook van de Nations Cup. Waarin we strijden dus om de landenwedstrijd. Daarnaast ook het Nederlands kampioenschap. Daarin moet ook de ontknoping nog plaatsvinden. Dus wat dat betreft uh, mooie sport te gaan voor het uh, resterende deel van deze middag. Ik krijg door van onze ringmeester nog vijf minuten voordat we de eerste combinatie gaan uitnodigen. We hadden rond half drie gepland. Dus uh, de deelnemers moeten ook uh, de paarden optimaal kunnen prepareren. Voorbereiden. Prepareren is misschien niet het goede woord, maar wel voorbereiden zodat ze ook om uh, half drie in de ring verschijnen. Bedankt uh, Jan uh, Belbink, uh, dames en heren. Wij uh, maken ons op dus voor de eerste start uh, na de pauze. Exact uh, half drie. Giovanni Ugolotti uit Italië met uh, Benny Hennessy.
Ja, ik zei het al eerder, startbal hoorde beter aangepast ten opzichte van de andere jaren. We houden rekening mee met de landenwedstrijd, de Nations Cup. En daar wordt eigenlijk ook in omgekeerde volgorde gestart. Het team wat als zesde voor staat, start als eerste. En het team wat als beste voor staat, start als laatste. Frankrijk nog aan de leiding. En ze begonnen erg sterk vanmiddag met Jean-Louis Bigot. Die pak nog eens met Utrino. De laatste 25. En dan weten we wie er hier gaat winnen. Yes, another Billy horse. This one by Billy Congo. Billy Hennessy with Giovanni Ugalotti will be first in after the break for Italy. Italy, remember, are here fighting for team qualification, te uh, a team spot for the Paris Olympic Games next year in this Nations Cup competition. Roos Kenter, hoogste score op dit moment 32,3. Dat betreft dan de deelnemers die al de springpool hebben afgelegd. Het mooie parcours van de Chris van Gelder, onze course designer uit Nederland. Roos Kenter dus, beste score 32,3. Maar kijk maar eens op de startlijst, dan uh, ziet u dat er nog heel wat deelnemers zijn die dat resultaat kunnen verbeteren. Janneke Banzaier verdedigt haar Nederlandse titel hier op de Military van Boekelo Enschede. Vorig jaar eh, Nederlandse kampioene met eh, Bouncer. En nu aan de leiding met een score van 40,8. Maar concurrentie voor de Nederlandse titel die gaat nog komen van de Sanne de Jong. Die staat op 39,5. Een miniem verschil. En dan ook uh, op de eerste plaats uh, na de dressuur en de klasgang die Merel Blom Hulsman. En de score voor Merel is 37,9. Dus die top 3 ligt uh, super dicht bij elkaar. Andere aanvallers kunnen zich uh, eigenlijk geen fouten permitteren. En Nicolas Cruzijn, dames en heren. Dat was uh, de man die in 2006 hier heeft gewonnen. Die heeft het allerbeste resultaat na de dressuur en de crosscount. Die zal hier als laatste starten vanmiddag met een score van 25,4. Yes, our leader in the clubhouse, so to speak, is Roz Kanta, world number one, riding Dasik Kulidan. She jumped a lovely clear round earlier on. She has another horse later this afternoon in this last session of jumping. She's in fifth place individually, and Team Great Britain, her ride and the team, are in second place. Welcome back to Bukelo as we look forward to the final session of show jumping here to conclude what has been the most incredible, the most exciting four days of competition. And uh, we will be discovering the individual Bukelo champion as well as the Dutch national champion. And of course, which team will be stood upon the uh, top spot in the Nations Cup podium for here in Bukelo as well, all within the next 60 minutes or so. So we hope wherever in the world you are joining us from. You are settled in and relaxed for what is going to be a nail-biting conclusion. The individual leader at the moment, Nicolas Tuzon, Diablo Month, 25.4. Moving up from third after dressage to uh, take the top spot coming into the show jumping. Lara de Lieder, Kirkemeyer, de Cathy Darville riding as individuals for Belgium sit in second. Laura Collett, de Capo, third here last year, currently sit third at the moment as well, 26.9. One pole in the show jumping covers the top six in the individual standings. Of those who have jumped so far today, the best score in the clubhouse, she will be 13th or better, Roz Kanter and Dasit Kulidan, one of only two horses to have finished on their dressage score so far. 
Ross on a score of 32.3. Let's just uh, remind ourselves how the Nations Cup is uh, unfolding as well. France out in front at the moment, two fences in hand of Great Britain in second. The Netherlands have moved up to third and uh, they still have two riders left to show jump and less than a fence behind them, a Belgium on 121.0. The United States of America, 127.0 in fifth. New Zealand hot on their heels. Ireland hot on their heels. So, certainly looks to be a uh, thrilling conclusion to the competition. And uh, we are running in reverse order of merit with the teams. So the teams coming in reverse order, sending first their fourth team member if they had one left in the competition, then their third team member, then their second, and then their first. So we're currently looking at uh, Italian rider Giovanni Ugolotti, the uh, second rider, second best place rider, I should say for Italy to come forwards. Uh, Umberto Riva will be their last to go. So Giovanni Galotti on a score of 51.0 comes forward in 55th place coming into the jumping. As you can see, already moved up a couple of placings at the moment with uh, what has unfolded throughout the day so far. 51.0, his total penalty score and uh, put in a really good clear round in the cross country with this horse yesterday. A new ride for him this season and uh, very much looking, I'm sure, to get a good qualification result at the four-star level. Owned by Harriet Burton. 51.0 for Giovanni Ugolotti. Good early part of the round. 83 seconds the time allowed for uh, Chris Van Gelder's show jumping track. And actually the second half of it has certainly proved to be the most influential as the day has progressed so far. That time of 83 seconds has proved to be quite tricky. And Joe would be a okay on time, would be a little bit close, especially just holding for the last, which goes, unfortunately, in a time penalty as well. So 4.4 to add for Giovanni Galotti and Billy Hennessy. 59.4, their total score. Just frustrating to have the final fence down. And uh, that will see him just drop a few places on the leadboard, 59.4. We'll see him go into uh, around 58th place. It is unbelievably competitive. We had 112 starters in this four-star long format this weekend. Surely one of the biggest in the world this year. As next to come forward, the next team member for Sweden. It is Marlin Josefsson and uh, Golden Midnight. Team Sweden, are in eighth place Sweden coming forward Good to the uh, final show jumping. Still holding on to eighth place, 149.3 is their team score at the moment. They haven't got a fence to stay ahead of Australia. This combination coming forward on their dressage score. were very good in the cross-country phase yesterday. Would be an experienced duo. <laughs> Marlin. Giving this horse a really lovely round so far. She comes to the combination, which stays. 
generally speaking, be pretty good in this phase. They jump clear on the final day of the uh, European Championships in Avanche. Back in 2021, finished top 20 individually there. Completed Protoni and helped the Swedish team get that qualifying ticket last year as well. That was a tough old show jumping day. Going to be a bit close to the time. But uh, the last goes, as it so often has, and a time penalty as well. So one pole down, 0.4 of a time penalty for Marlin Josefsson. And at Golden Midnight, she's not the only one to have just had that final fence fall. So uh, that is going to take Sweden onto a score of uh, actually just below Australia. So next to come forwards, riding her team horse. So this is a team horse for Belgium and again jumping slightly out of order because Lara has another ride a little bit later on in the individual standings. Uh, this is Huni Darville. Lara comes forward on a score of 30.4. She's in the uh, top 10 individually overnight in ninth place. But uh, this is an important round for the Belgian team. Belgium on 121.0. They've got a fence in hand of America in fifth. They're in fourth at the moment, Belgium. But they're within a fence of the Netherlands. They would dearly love to put the pressure back on the Dutch. Ah, first part of the combination has gone. So that just gives the Netherlands a little bit of breathing room. We'll drop Lara out of the top 10 individually. But still a very, very solid score. Just the last to go. Time is good. Ah, the last goes as well. Lara de Lidekirkemeyer, Uni Darvil just have the final fence as well. So eight in total, 38.4 is her total score. And uh, that is actually going to see some movement in the team leaderboard again. For Lara, it sees her go into 26th place individually. And in terms of the team, it is going to drop Belgium two places on the leaderboard. They actually go behind the United States and behind New Zealand, who move up to fourth and fifth, respectively. So now it is a, a counting score for Team Ireland. Ireland currently in seventh on 130.9. And to be fair, one pole covers fourth through to seventh at the moment, covers four teams. So... Clear round for Robbie Kearns here. We'll certainly see Ireland putting some pressure on. Valley Valane OBOS by OBOS Quality on a score of 45.1. He brings forward. That sees him just outside the top 40. Clear cross country, 11.6 time penalties yesterday. Robbie just moving on around the arena. There's a few places here where course designer Chris Van Gelder has just sort of left the door open for riders to lose a little bit of time. 83 seconds is that time allowed, remember. And he is going to be quite close to it. Clear jumping, though. Robbie Kearns. 
Bally Villain OBOS for Team Ireland. Just the last to go. The time is going to be tight. He's going to get a time penalty. And the last goes again. My goodness me. That final fence is a heartbreaker today. 50.7 his total score. The last four in a row have had the last fence down. And uh, so one pole plus uh, some time penalties for Robbie Kearns. And... Uh, Valley yeah, Villain, OBOS. How often have we seen that final fence fall in high pressure situations? So now we turn our attentions to New Zealand. Ireland have just taken the pressure off slightly. But now we turn to James Avery, Dallas 13. David and Catherine Thompson. This is uh, a horse that was dressage bred by DiMaggio, bred by Amy Woodhead. But actually, they felt that his talents really lay in the eventing field. New Zealand on 128.5. They haven't got a pole in hand of Belgium who are on 129.0. They still have Tim Price to jump as well. Dallas 41.5, the score that James bringing forward. Good through the combination. Sees him just outside the top 30 individually. Oh, he yeah. had a little bit of luck at the Oxer at nine. The time is okay. Three fences left to go. James Avery, Dallas 13. Big round for the New Zealand team here. They'll be putting a lot of pressure on, but a pole is gone. So, uh, one down for James Avery. That moves Belgium back up the leaderboard. James Avery still a very good weekend at the office for him. 45.5 his total score. We'll see him finish no worse than 42nd in terms of the team standings. New Zealand move on to 132.5. Belgium go back up to fifth on 129.0. So, now all eyes turn to the United States of America, who currently sit in fourth on 127.0. Again, they haven't got a fence in hand ahead of Belgium. So, to hold on to fourth and to put the pressure on the Netherlands, they must jump clear with their final couple of riders. Cassie Sanger, the first of them. We'll see James Alliston in a short while as well. Fernhill Zorro. 39.5, this combination bring forward. Cassie, who made her Nations Cup debut in Stragom for the Land Rover US eventing team a little bit earlier on this summer. Just 19 years of age. Cassie really keeping her momentum up. It's a horse that has been so impressive coming up the levels at the three-star division. And has been very good in that jump up to four-star this year. First visit to Buccalo for Cassie. The time is good. Just the last to go. Is it going to be a clear round for the USA? No, it's not because the final fence goes once again. Cassie Sanger, Fernhill, Zorro. 
picking up four penalties to add for the United States of America. Still a very, very good weekend for them. She completes on 43.5. And uh, that will see her finish inside the top 40 of a very competitive field here in Bukalo. 43.5 finishing score at, at a four-star long competition is very good. So uh, Cassie Sanger. One pole down, easily inside the time. So in terms of the U.S. team, that actually puts Belgium back up to fourth. The U.S. on 131.0 now in fifth. And it is France, Great Britain, the Netherlands, Belgium, the U.S., New Zealand are the top six. Now, what can the Netherlands do? Sana Dion, global fairly flashy, coming forwards. 39.5. Two things at stake here. First of all, the uh, Dutch National Championship. If she jumps clear, she puts the pressure on teammate Meryl Blom for the Dutch National title. She has to jump clear to do that. But also for the Dutch team to be on the podium, the Home Nations Cup leg really would be something quite special. The Dutch team do have a couple of fences in hand of Belgium. So they do have a couple of fences for that team spot, but ah, one of them has gone. So the Dutch national champion will either be Janneke Boonschei or Meryl Blom Holzman. Okay, two fences have fallen, which means that now a third would see Belgium move back into a podium position here. Sana de Jong, global fairly flashy. And I think that went as well. So just wait for confirmation on the live scores because it just was out of uh, the shot. No, just showing us two fences down at the moment. So... Ah, the last has gone, though. OK, so the Netherlands drop off the podium. Belgium move back onto a podium position. Sana de Jong, global fairly flashy. Finish on 51.9. Three fences down for them. And so that means that Sana de Jong individually finishes inside the top 50. And in terms of the Nations Cup standings, France and Great Britain are the one, two. Belgium are back up to third. We're going to see Karen Donkers come forward for them now. And that's their last counting score. And then the Netherlands have uh, still got one more to jump, and they currently sit in fourth. If Karen Donkers jumps clear, Belgium guarantee themselves a podium finish. She has to jump clear. She could afford a couple of seconds of time, three seconds of time, 1.2 time penalties. That is it. If she has a rail, she opens the door back open for the Dutch team to climb back into a podium position. It's a real battle for third place here. No better lady to be under pressure, though. Karen Donkers, 36.2 is the individual score she brings forward. Coming into the show jumping, she was in the top 30 in 28th place. Kai Steffenmeyer, the chef to keep for the Belgian team, has really targeted the Nations Cup series this year. They're already runaway leaders of the overall series standings. They have 600 points. They can extend their lead again if they finish on the podium this weekend. But they've won it regardless because they came into this competition with an unassailable lead. They also picked up that team qualification for the Olympic Games, their first team ticket since London 2012 at the European Championships. Whew, slightly nervous moments. At that vertical at 10. Karen Donkers coming down the final line. This uh, final fence is for a podium position for Belgium guaranteed. And she does it. Belgium will be on the podium. They have already won the Nations Cup. 
series this year but they guarantee themselves another podium finish here it will be a top 20 finish for Karen Donkers ice running through her veins in that show jumping round as cool as a cucumber but you can just see what it means to Karen she has jumped in so many big arenas over the years she has jumped under so many different amounts of pressure this performance is very very special and the Belgian team will be guaranteed third place or better because that was their final team rider to jump now it is the turn for France Karim Florin Le 33.9 in uh, top 20 position coming into the show jumping and Brandarino, the horse that he brings forward again accounting score for France so France they have uh, Two fences in hand of Great Britain, whose uh, riders will jump in the individual top 10. So we're jumping in team reverse order of merit, but then the top 10 individuals are jumping in reverse order of merit as well. So because Great Britain have two in the top 10 individually, they'll be coming forward a little bit more out of order, but in order. Don't worry about it. We'll keep you posted. Karen Florin Laguac and Brandarino. Nicolas Toussaint, Diablo Month, of course, the final French rider to go. He will be the last to go. France, two fences in hand of Great Britain. Karim, who was part of that uh, French team, who won a team bronze at the Europeans in Haradapan a few uh, months ago. Looking good. Comes to the final fence. Gets the job done. France in the driving seat here. Karen Flora Leguag, Embran Dadino will be guaranteed a top 20 finish 33.9 is their individual finishing score but thumbs up to the crowd because uh, he's done what he needed to do he gives his teammate Nicolas Tuzon two fences in hand for the uh, top spot in the team competition but make no mistake Nicolas Tuzon wants to win the individual one as well so Karen Florin Laguag one of the sport's greatest characters Embran Dadino 33.9 his total score so now it is the uh, turn of the final australian team rider bill levitt r and h tom tom r bill comes forward on a score of 37.0 they uh, just had 4.4 time penalties yesterday Otherwise, a very good clear round to add to their dressage score of 32.6. This horse owned by uh, wife Jenny. And as I say, the final member of the Australian team here. Only a nine-year-old by Tolan R. The Australian team on 151.1. Ah, back rail of the middle part of the combination goes. Drops Australia behind Sweden in the team standings. So just the last to go. One pole down for Bill Levitt. R and H, Tom Tom R. Clears the last really well. And Bill will be uh, very pleased with this young horse this weekend. Finishes on a score of 41.0. And uh, that will be the best of the Australian team. 
So uh, Bill Levitt has uh, finished his book at O20. 23 finishes actually just ahead of teammates Cooley Flight and Ryan Wood, who finish on 42.6. So only some 15 or so left to show jump. The first of those will be the final member of the Italian team, Umberto Riva Falcon Sun Hup Z. Accommodation currently uh, could go into second in the clubhouse leaderboard. Ros Cantor, Dasit Cooley Dunn. Ros, of course, uh, with another ride a little bit later on, which is why she's already jumped Dasit Cooley Dunn. 32.3, the score that is best place locked in in the clubhouse. This is the 13 year old owned by Claudio Riva. Jumped a brilliant clear round inside the time cross country yesterday. So bidding to finish on their dressage score here. The Italian team in the Nations Cup in 10th at the moment on 164.3. The Italian team had so much less pressure coming into this weekend. That has gone. So one pole down. So much less pressure coming into this weekend than they might have anticipated because they didn't pick up that Olympic qualifying ticket at the Europeans. So was coming down to the Nations Cup standings because one ticket is on offer to the highest placed team in the Nations Cup series that has not yet qualified as it happened as they came into Bucalo only Spain could have caught them but actually Spain not fielding a team here in Bucalo really rides his luck at that Oxer at nine but it stays so Italy already knew that ticket was theirs coming into the weekend's competition Ah, final fence goes as well. So eight jumping to add for Umberto Riva and Falcon Sunhip Z sees them on a score of 40.6 and that will actually just drop them well outside the top 15, cost them some 15, 16 places on the leaderboard. We'll finish inside the top 30, but will still be the best of the uh, Italian team members to have completed. Team Italy will take the final place for the Olympic Games. So, next we turn our attentions to Sweden. Louise Romayka and Caspian 15, currently on a score of 33.7, just five seconds over the time yesterday. This horse owned by Klaas Hermann Romayka. Louise's uh, husband welcomed uh, a new baby not all that long ago. Father-in-law, Heinrich Romarka, the 2008 Olympic champion. But Louise herself has uh, competed for Sweden at lots of different major championships. And this is a horse that she'd dearly like to think could take her to a, another Olympic Games next year. cannot afford a pull down to stay ahead of Karim Laguag and Brandarino, who are behind them on the individual leaderboard. In terms of the team standings, Sweden in eighth on 153.7. Does need to be a clear round for them to stay ahead of Australia. <laughs> I tell you what, there's some jump on this horse, isn't there? No end of scope. Just the final fence for Louise Romayaka. And Caspian, 15. She's going to get a time penalty. Or 2.8 time penalties to add. 34.5 is her total. But that is still a uh, good weekend for Louise. She will finish best of the Swedish riders here. Guaranteed a top 15 finish. And uh, 84.7 seconds her round. So just sneaking outside that time allowed of 83 seconds, which has been influential. Next to go, 
It is the turn of Ireland's final team rider, Claire Abbott, with Julent on a score of 31.6. This combination won the three star at Lisgarvan as part of their final preparation for Buccalo. Comes forward on 31.6. Again, cannot afford a pole down to hold her position on the leaderboard. For Ireland, they're currently sitting in seventh, and there's a bit of a buffer of uh, just under 20 penalties. Could have four down and still stay ahead of Sweden. Ah, that vertical has gone at five. Jumping straight into the crowds down that line. And there's a lot of people watching here today. There's quite an atmosphere, a lot going on around the outside of the arena as well. So on that score of 35.6, big combination to have back for Ireland heading into an Olympic year as well. Had a bit of time on the sidelines after the horse went so brilliantly cross country at badminton in 2022. And touches the last, but it stays inside the time. So 35.6 total score for Claire Abbott and Julent. And that sees them just drop a couple of places on the leaderboard. They go behind uh, Karim Laguag, behind Ros Cantor, behind Karim Laguag, behind, behind Louise Ramayaka, and will be 14th at worst. So anybody now who uh, jumps clear guarantees themselves uh, almost a top 10 position. They will guarantee themselves a top 10 position, actually. James Alistair, well, I say that, anybody in the top 10 who jumps now will guarantee themselves a top 10 position because, of course, we are running in team reverse order of merit. Caught myself out there. James Alliston now comes forward with Karma, one of the fastest of the day yesterday, on a score of 35.9. All of those dressage penalties in fifteenth individually as well. She's a really cool, feisty little mare. This won the four-star long format Rebecca Farm in the summer. James based on the west coast of uh, America alongside wife Helen. So well used to traveling. But they have a great eventing community out there on the west coast as well. The time looks good. Safe to say she show jumps as quickly as she goes cross country. So just the final three fences. The last to go for James Alliston and Karma. Be a top 15 finish for them here in Bukalo as they jump the last. And that is a very, very good job. Well done. Will be best of the US combinations here in Bukalo for the Land Rover US eventing team. Finishes on 35.9. Goes into fifth on the live leaderboard, but will be no worse than 15th. And I know the team watching back at home in uh, on the West Coast. I'm not even going to guess what time of day or night it is. But uh, if you are tuned in, then uh, James has absolutely made it worth your while. The US team will secure fifth. And uh, they could move up as well because Merrill Blom Holzman next to jump for the Netherlands could not afford a pole down to stay ahead of the US. So the U.S. will be uh, fifth or better. Meryl Blom Holzman also jumping for the Dutch national title here. Janneke Boonschkei leads that on 40.8. She cannot afford a pole down to take that individual Dutch national championship. The 
for Suive de Viron. Experienced at this level of competition. Has come out on the final day and jumped a few times at this level before. For the Dutch team, has got to jump clear for them to keep fourth. Ah, so Janneke Boonschke is the new Dutch national champion as Merrill Blom Holzman has a pole down at six. It also means that the United States move up to fourth, New Zealand move up to fifth, the Netherlands drop to sixth. She's got another pole in hand to keep them in sixth, but from a personal perspective, she'd dearly love not to have anything else. Time is going to be tight. She'll pick up a time penalty or two as well, I think. So, Meryl Blom Holzman for Sive de Viron. Clear the last. One pole down. And uh, there's going to be 1.2 time penalties as well. She finishes on 43.1. It sees the Dutch team finish on 135.8 in sixth. And it means that the new Dutch national champion is uh, Janneke Boonschkeyer. And I'm Special N, who uh, take that class. Uh, reserve champion will be Meryl Blom Holzman and Vasoiv de Viron. Sana Dion, Global Fairly Flashy, rounding out the podium in the Dutch national title race. So now we turn our attentions to uh, Germany. The final team rider for Germany, it is uh, Christoph Waller and Decor FRH. One of the quickest yesterday. In fact, they were the quickest yesterday. Uh, 31.5, their score that they bring forwards. Christoph, the highest placed uh, team member for the German nation. Decor FRH comes to the final fence. Stay inside the top 15, having just had the one down. And he is in the end comfortably inside. So 35.5, Christoph Waller. And Decor FRH drops him five places on the four places on the leaderboard. And he will be 13th or better. So just nine combinations left to jump here in Bukalo. If you're just tuning in, then we're into the top 10 in reverse order of merit in terms of the Nations Cup st team standings. Great France lead on 97.8. They have two fences in hand of Great Britain. They only have one rider left to jump. Great Britain are currently in second on 107.2. They have two riders left to jump. Uh, they have got a few fences in hand of Belgium, who are on 129.0. They're locked in on the podium in third. Uh, the US locked in in fourth or better. Uh, New Zealand, we're about to see their final team member jump now. They're in fifth as a team. And uh, Tim Price comes forward with Gerillo. It's a horse that was third at Blenheim in the eight and nine-year-old class just uh, a few weeks ago. Owned by uh, Lucy Allison, Francis Stead, James and uh, Rachel Good. And uh, this horse definitely one to enjoy watching in the show jumping.
would certainly not be lacking in the scope department. Tim, who for much of the year has been ranked the FEI world number one, won here 12 months ago with Happy Boy. Has won here previously with Seca Tinker as well. Girillo, five seconds over the time cross-country yesterday. Tim, absolutely fine in the time in the show jumping. Just the last to go. Tim Price, Girillo, for a guaranteed top 10 finish. And he gives it bags of space. This horse absolutely class this week. Only a nine-year-old stepping up to the level for the first time. Tim is smiling and with very good reason. Finishes on 31.0. And that will actually see the New Zealand team, who actually only fielded three riders here this weekend, and they've got all three of them home. They'll be ruining that 20 penalties cross-country from Janelle Price because otherwise would have been really serving it up to uh, France. But even so, brilliant weekend for them. And uh, they will finish in fifth or better. So now we turn our attentions to France. Riding as an individual will be Luc Chateau, Bastia de la Baie. On a score of 30.2. So this is not going to affect the French Nations Cup team score. This is uh, only for individual placing. Bastia de la Baie. Owned by El Haras de Chateau and Laurie Sadro. Just one second over the time cross country yesterday. Cost him one place on the leaderboard, in fact, coming into the show jumping. Oof, rode his luck slightly at the parallel at three, but it stayed. It's a 12 year old by uh, Propriano de la Baie. Horse that Luke actually campaigned up to the four star level himself went to the Nations Cup actually at Tattersall's a good few years ago back in maybe 2016 or something on that score of 32 30.2 remember the clubhouse leader Tim Price Gerillo on 31.0 not afford a pull down time is again looking okay if you're coming around that red vertical with less than 70 on the clock you should be all right just the last to go which has been so influential today but jumps it really well Luc Chateau Bastia de la Bay 30.2 is their total score the French have been on fire in this show jumping arena this afternoon They've put in uh, a good number of our clear rounds and Luke Chateau guaranteed to be uh, inside the top 10. He will be uh, eighth or better. He is now the one to beat. So we go on to Selena Miltz. Selena riding as an individual for Great Britain. So again, doesn't affect the British Nations Cup team score. It's a nine-year-old by Canan, owned by uh, Angela and William Rucker. Comes forward on their dressage score of 29.9. We've had some four people, I think, so far, complete by finishing on their dressage score. There or thereabouts, Selena could add another one to the tally. This horse won the Defender Four Star Short at Bramham a little bit earlier on this year, then went on to be top five at Blenheim in the eight and nine year old class. Was actually top 15 at Blenheim as an eight year old as well last year.
a really good job through the combination there. Selena, who uh, would have been unlucky not to have picked up her first senior team selection for Team GB. Just uh, the strength and depth in the British squad has meant that she's been on the long list a time or two, but not quite made it into the final team. This horse could well change that in the next few years, though. As she puts in a beautiful clear round. Really, really well done. Selena Mills and Cooley Snapchat finish on their dressage score here. Comfortably inside the time allowed. They finish at sub 30 as well, which uh, I think will add a little bit of an extra dazzle to Selena's smile. So uh, they will be seventh or better here. Any pole, any pole down is really going to affect that individual leaderboard. So a pole down, it is unbelievably tight. Now it is the final Swiss rider of the weekend, Felix Vogt, Deo de Lucien, 29.4 in sixth place coming forward to the show jumping. Switzerland actually down in 11th. Unfortunately, two of their riders not completing the cross country yesterday, which meant that... Uh, they were not able to challenge in the team competition. Felix Vogg, five-star winner for Switzerland. Been to a whole host of uh, Worlds, Europeans and Olympics as well. Deo de Lucien was on the podium individually in uh, Avanche at the Nations Cup. Again, can't have a pole down to stay ahead of Selena Mills. Can't even afford a time penalty to stay ahead of Selena Mills. Horse so far jumping beautifully. The time would be looking pretty good as well. It was the final fence that cost him the win in Avanche. Just the one to go here today. Oh, the final fence comes down at once again. Felix Vogue, Deo de Lucien just drop a couple of places on the leaderboard. And they finish on 33.4. So uh, they will actually be guaranteed a top 10 finish here. But that moves Selena Milnes up into sixth. Luke Chateau up a place. Tim Price, Ros Cantor. And then Felix Vogg slots into 10th. That final fence has proven to be so influential. It's a tricky line from the combination. And I think riders are aware of the clock. They're jumping directly towards the in and out gate. But either way, Felix Volk, one pole down. So now a second uh, ride for Roz Cantor. Roz comes forward now with MHS 17. And this is a team score that counts for Great Britain. So Roz on a penalty score of uh, 28.6. Cannot afford a pole down to hold her position. She's already got one horse guaranteed in the top 10. That's Dasset Cooley done. But she could have another. Great Britain, between the final two riders, have five fences in hand ahead of Belgium to hold on to second on the podium. I'd be dearly hoping they're not going to need all of those. First two team British riders... Caroline Harris and Yazingham have both jumped clear. Ross, who uh, won the four-star long format at Blenheim with Islot DHI back in uh, September. Also won the European Championship title this year, plus badminton by a record-winning margin. 
safe to say she is a lady in very good form. This pressure cooker of reverse order show jumping is something else. Just the one to go. Ros Cantor, MHS 17. Clears the final fence. The time is good as well. And the European champion will have two horses inside the top 10 here on the final leaderboard. MHS 17 finishes on a dressage score of 28.6 for the British team. Ros, full of confidence with a yard full of some really exciting talented horses going into to 2024. 28.6, job done for Ros Cantor. She will be fifth or better. Now, the turn of Felix Etzel with the uh, Stallion TSF Politans. 28.4, Felix's score for this horse owned by Ulrika Malta by Convoy. 12 years of age and a horse that actually combines his eventing career alongside uh, his stud duties of which I believe uh, there are quite a few stud duties as well takes a, a horse with a really special temperament to be able to do both jobs so well put in one of the rounds of the day for me yesterday cannot afford a pole down is riding as an individual for Germany so this does not affect the team standings at all looking very keen coming to the combination does a good job of keeping him off that back vertical. Doesn't look to be hanging around, so I would imagine the time is good. Oh, the back rail hopped about in the cups for a second, but it stayed, and so did that one. And again, I think it stayed. Two pieces of luck on Felix Etzel's side here. Oh, I think that luck has just run out. So, one pole down for Felix Etzel. He'll stay inside the top 10. And the last goes, unfortunately, that one will drop him out of the top 10. Frustrating for him. He goes down into 16th. The time was good. 36.4, the total score for uh, TSF Politan's Felix Etzel. And that means that Ros Cantor moves up to fourth. So, Ros Cantor will be fourth at worst. She is the clubhouse leader, 28.6 with MHS 17. Three combinations left to go here in Bukalo. The first of those is the final member of the British team. So, Laura Collett and uh, De Capo. Just to put into context, the British team score is 107.2. They're currently in the team silver spot. They're two fences, more than two fences behind France. And they've got some five fences ahead of Belgium, in hand of Belgium, who will a guaranteed third. So, barring disaster, you would think Great Britain are guaranteed the second place on the podium. At best, at worst, sorry. Laura already had one good round with Sportsfield Freelance. De Capo was actually in the lead here 12 months ago. One pole down cost him the win, but he finished on the podium. Can he uh, finish on the podium once again? 26.9, remember his score. Cannot afford a pole to stay ahead of teammate Ros Cantor, MHS 17. Laura, who trains in this phase with Jay Hallam. Part of the British team that won team gold at the Europeans in Haradapan. Won Le Moulin five star this year as well. Time looks fine. Three fences left to go. Laura Collett de Capo for a guaranteed spot on the podium. And it'll be Ros Cantor on the podium instead. 
One fence has fallen. Laura clears the final fence and a pull down still sees her finish inside the top 10. She's just going to drop a couple of places further down the order. We'll go down into sixth with De Capo, but that means that Ros Cantor moves up to third. Selena Mill at worst, this is. Luke Chateau, fifth at worst. The British team secure themselves silver. And Laura just gives uh, Nicolas Tuzon Diablo Month that little bit more breathing room if uh, uh, France now have three fences in hand of uh, Great Britain. So, into the top two. Lara de Lidekakamaya, Ducati Darville competing as individuals for Belgium. They were top ten in Arken a little bit earlier on this season in the SAP Cup. Again, can't afford a pole down to hold her position. So 26.6 is her score. Could actually afford to be four seconds over the time to stay ahead of Ros Cantor. But if she jumps clear, she puts the pressure on Nicolas Tuzon Diablo Month. Lara de Lidekakamaya for Belgium. She's already been in this arena twice this afternoon. Part of that Belgian team who secured yet another podium finish in the Nations Cup Series in 2023. That's the current standings, 28.6, Selena uh, Ros Counter, 29.9, Selena Milnes. Ducati Darville. Ooh. Had to work hard through that combination. It's a horse that I think Lara bought on a whim when she was uh, pregnant and has really worked hard to get him up the levels. The fences have all stayed so far. She's just got three to go. The time is going to be tight. She could afford to be is it four seconds over the time to stay ahead of Ros Cantor? She can't afford a pull down. So the time is tight, but she jumps the last. She's through the finish, 28.6. She's going to be equal with Ros Cantor. We'll just get that confirmed for you, but she guarantees second place because she was closer to the optimum time than Ros Cantor in the cross country so she will be second or better lara de lida kirkamaya this is arguably one of the biggest probably the sweetest results of her career you can see what it means to her she's won more internationals than any other rider in the world this year she could be about to add number 11. it all comes down to one final rider and it is nicholas chuzon diablo moth who will be uh, the final combination into the arena here this weekend in bukalo lara de lida kirkamaya finishes on 28.6 exactly the same score as ros canter mhs 17 but lara closer to the optimum time cross country so will hold the higher position so the win will go to belgium or it will go to France. Now, Nicolas Tuzon, Diablo Month, he has three fences in hand for France to secure the Nations Cup victory with this 10-year-old by Scarface de Mars, owned by Francois Nicolas and SC Mazar Sports. But make no mistake, he will want to jump a clear round and take another Buccalo title. He last won here 17 years ago. He's won a hell of a lot since that time, including badminton as the only French winner of badminton back in 2008 with Hildalgo de Lille. He's a former European champion, had that wonderful partnership with another magical grey horse, Galland de Soviet. Diablo Month jumping for the win here. If he has a rail down, the win will go to Lara de Lidekakamaya. has jumped on the final day of two four-star long formats previously, has been third and second, jumped clear in one, 
had a pull down in the other. This is one of the most exciting horses in the sport right now. Second highest rated 10 year old in the world on Echo Ratings data. The highest would be another French horse, Gaspar Maxud's Zaragoza. Nicolas, who was part of the French team that won Team Bronze at the Europeans in Haradapin. That was with absolute gold. The time is absolutely fine. So Nicolas Tuzon, Diablo Month, coming down the final line for the Bucalo title. He's just got to clear the last. He can afford to take a pull. And he does it. Nicolas Tuzon is your Bucalo champion. What a performance from this duo throughout the weekend. What might we see from them in the next 12 months? Well, one thing is certain. We've seen something very, very special here in Bucalo. There's nothing quite like a Nicolas Tuzon celebration. A win here at Bucalo 17 years after his first Bucalo title. And he tops the podium again in 2023. And how exciting for France as well. This is the final leaderboard. Nicolas Tuzon, Diablo Mont finish on their dressage score of 25.4 to take the win. Lara de Lida Kakamaya, so near yet so far. She'll be glad those time penalties didn't cost her. She secured seconds with Ducati Darville. Ros Cantor, MHS 17 on exactly the same score but uh, Lara finishing dot on the optimum time takes the higher podium position a little bit further on down the leadboard Ross Cantor another ride for her inside the top 10 France have had a great weekend Karen Florin Laguag and Plan Darino finishing in the top 10 also Louise Remaica Caspian 15 we could well see them in Paris for Sweden next year they finished in 11th and it has been a good weekend for Christophe Fauler Decor as well a little bit further on, Najiminda top jobs, Jalisco securing a top 20 finish for Switzerland. Top 25 for Cosby Green, Yosufo de Kadam. I think she'll be pretty pleased with that. So the individual standings see France at the top, but also in the Nations Cup standings as well. France that guaranteed the win here this weekend, 97.8. And actually, really impressively, they added nothing in the jumping phases, uh, in the cross-country phase, I should say, to that post-cross-country team tally. Three clear rounds from their three counting team members. Great Britain in second, 111.2 take the silver medal. Belgium get yet another podium finish in the Nations Cup this year, 129.0. United States of America pushed them all the way. They were 11th after dressage. They move up to fourth overall. And uh, New Zealand in fifth, uh, Netherlands in sixth. So that is how the individual standings have shaped up. That is how the team standings look in terms of the other competition this weekend, the Dutch National Championship. Janneke Boonschkeyer is the newly crowned Dutch national champion. She finished on 40.8. Meryl blom holzman Vasoiv de Viron would take the reserve title, 43.1, ahead of Sana de Jong and Global Fairly Flashy, 51.9. But what a roller coaster of a weekend here in Bukele. We hope that you have enjoyed all of the thrills, all of the spills, as much as we have. It has been France who have stayed on top of the podium on the final day. Nicolas Tuzon, Diablo Month, absolutely a pair of names to look for in 2024. It has to be said, the entire Nations Cup series has been an absolute delight this year. Belgium have been brilliant throughout the final Olympic qualification ticket on offer to the highest placed team in the Nations Cup series. The end of the competition, not yet qualified, will go to Italy. We look forward to seeing them in Paris next summer. But from everybody involved at Bucalo, a very, very big thank you for tuning in. And uh, let's look forward to seeing what France can do at a home Olympics in 2024. Your winner of Bucalo 2023, Nicolas Tuzon and Diablo Mont. Thank you very much for joining us.